with the series even at a game apiece. Joined now by Harold Reynolds and Tom Verducci. This is the part of the telecast where generally we tell you what to expect. But what do we know? Wayne Wright against Kershaw yesterday, 10 to 9. Kershaw with a 6-1 lead. He'd allowed 21 earned runs in 14 starts at Dodger Stadium all year. He allowed eight yesterday. The Cardinals don't hit home runs. They hit three of them. A.J. Ellis, 191 with three homers for the year. Four for five yesterday with a bomb. So go figure. Now tell me what to expect when Granke goes against Lynn. How do you follow that? Now this matchup is not the marquee matchup. But I think it's a fascinating one because when you look at the numbers, it looks extremely even. But when you think about the national profiles, a big difference. I believe this is the chance for Lance Lynn to change that. An under-the-radar pitcher has a chance to really raise his profile. Last two years, one of only four pitchers with 15 wins and 200 innings. Zach Greinke, you know, a Cy Young winner. What well, you might not know, absolutely loves pitching in this ballpark. 19-4 and four lifetime at Dodger Stadium. That's the best record anybody who made 30 starts here. And if there is a game five in this series, Greinke would get the ball again here at Dodger Stadium. Now, talking about people making a national impression, Matt Carpenter has been in a few postseasons now, and he's beginning to emerge as a true Cardinal star. Well, he really is. I think the big key for Matt, he's back at third base. He's comfortable. So now he can relax, focus on the offense. He's struggled at times in the postseason the last couple of years. But yesterday, obviously, the home run, the big double right here that broke the game open. And I was impressed with that and this as well. The third base with D. Gordon running, the plays he's able to make. Oh, I think we're seeing a guy settle into his position, settle into himself, and obviously on a grand stage, you take that to another level. This is Matt Carpenter breaking out right now. Things were a bit unsettled in the third inning yesterday when Wainwright hit Puig and both benches emptied and Gonzalez and Molina were jawing at each other with word on the aftermath. Here's Ken Rosenthal. Bob, I spoke with Joe Torre before the game. He told me that no pregame warnings would be issued. In fact, he said that he could not recall a time when pregame warnings were ever issued, regular season or postseason. There are instances in which the umpires will give each team a heads up. That's a little bit less than a warning. But even tonight, those are not in play. Torrey said that he would like to believe that both teams understand the importance of this game. And of course, an umpire can eject a pitcher without issuing a warning at all. All right, Ken, thanks. The stage has been set. Zach Greinke will shortly be on the mound for the Dodgers. And we're back with the lineups in the first pitch of game two from Dodger Stadium right after this. Playoff game in the National 
League, it should involve the Dodgers and the Cardinals. As Zach Greinke completes his warm-ups and upwards of 50,000 settle into their seats, we want to remind you about shift tracks. For those of you who have not been with us earlier in the season, with more and more teams going to shifts, almost on every hitter it seems at times, we've devised the following. Instead of noting the position of every player each time, shift tracks will show you with a simple dot in the upper right-hand corner, or series of dots, where everyone is playing, those are the traditional positions, but as you know, very often there'll be three infielders on one side of the diamond or the other. And here is Greinke, 17 and 8 for the season, ERA 2.71. He was 15 and 4 last year, his first season as a Dodger. So he's 32 and 12 combined, wearing a Los Angeles uniform, unbeaten in his last eight starts, 5 and 0 in that span, with an ERA of 2.34 since mid-August. As Tom mentioned earlier, he has 30 career starts in this ballpark with a record of 19 and 4. In his last 10 regular season decisions against the Cardinals, he's gone 8 and 2. So precedent works in his favor as Matt Carpenter steps in. Two huge hits yesterday, and he takes a strike. The plate umpire is Rob Drake, Dale Scott at first, Eric Cooper at second, Jerry Lane at third. Six umpires in a postseason game down the right field line. Yesterday's plate umpire, Jerry Meals. Left field, Alan Porter. Here's D. Gordon from the outfield grass. The flip retires Carpenter. Which brings us to a look at the Cardinals. Geico's starting lineup. A year ago, they led the National League in scoring. This year, down almost exactly a run per game. 164 fewer runs this season than a year ago when they hit an almost unbelievable 330 with runners in scoring position. They have the third fewest stolen bases in the majors, the second fewest home runs in the majors, and the smallest run differential of any of the 10 postseason teams. And yet here they are. And a strike to John Jay. He hit 303 during the regular season. No shift on Jay. Uribe in fairly close at third. Ouch. And that hit him. And it draws no reaction. Down and in. Just a pitch that got away from Greinke. The fielder, number seven. Now, oh, what it is about John Jay, he got hit more than anybody in the National League. And right there, he saw it coming and held ground firmly. Yeah, he was plunked 20 times this year. Including a walk-off or limp-off, a game-ending hit-by-pitch <laughs> against Cincinnati in St. Louis. Here's Holiday, Two for four with a homer yesterday. 324 lifetime with a couple of home runs against Greinke. Well, he matches up real well with Grinky because Grinky keeps that ball down. He's a low ball hitter. We talk a lot about Mike Trout in the American League. Matt Holliday is as good as anybody. Ball down. Most of his extra base hits have come on pitches down low. Holliday, as is his usual pattern, much stronger in the second half of the season than before the All Star break. Through that, passed him at 94, 0 and 2. Greinke will be 31 later this month, a Florida native, 6'2 and 195. Would be the ace on almost any other staff. As good a number two guy as you'll find behind Clayton Kershaw. Jay is going to break for second, and he's going to make it. What a great job by John Jay. When you're on first base and you're, you're a base runner, you're already thinking about stealing, but the anticipation of the ball in the dirt. As soon as this ball hits the dirt, he's off and running. If A.J. Ellis comes up with it clean, 
He's still not going to get him. Watch this. As soon as it hits the dirt, he's off and going. A.J. Ellis has no chance to even react. And that is only because of the aggressiveness of John Jay. Look at his reaction here. Off and running because he knows that ball's going to kick. And the chances of him catching it clean are very difficult. Scored as a wild pitch. It caught Ellis by surprise. He didn't react right away. He was surprised that Jay took off. The one two is fouled with the seats. Well, Bob, you talked about how the Cardinal offense wasn't generating. These are the little things they've done down the stretch. They've been aggressive like that play right there with John Jay. And, and Holiday's got hot. That's been a little change in numbers for them. Both these teams closed with a rush. Cards were 17 and 9 in September. The Dodgers 17 and 8 as they secured their division titles. Two and two. This is now the third oldest ballpark in use in the major leagues after Fenway and Wrigley. Opened in 1962, but still more than accommodating. So beautiful, terrific vista as you look out towards Chavez Ravine. Tap foul of the plate. Dodger Stadium is a perfectly symmetrical ballpark. 330 down each line, 360 to straightaway left and right, 375 to each gap, 395 to straightaway center. It looks great when you look at 1912 and 1914, the difference to 1962, and this is way ahead of its time. It's held up. Tremendous. The only symmetrical ballpark in the National League. Jay at second with one out. And the 2-2 from Greinke to Holiday. And he'll make him work once more. Tom mentioned this earlier during our pregame programming and this is what the Dodgers are banking on hoping to get out of here with a split. Twenty four times this year Kershaw and Greinke took the mound in consecutive games and only once did they both lose. August 15th and 16th against the Brewers. Kershaw was beaten yesterday. And that's the luxury. That's why the Dodgers are in this situation when they set up the who they were going to pay the money to. It was these two guys because they knew they could have that back to back for some years to come. Greinke in the second year of a six year deal signed prior to last season with the, with the Dodgers. And he fans holiday. That one came humming in at ninety five. Well, let's take a look at the Chrysler keys to the game. Through the eyes of Zach Greinke, what does he need to do? Any pitch at any time. A true five-pitch pitcher, you can't sit on anything. I call it a camo slider. It really has the tightest spin of any slider. Very difficult for a hitter to pick up. It looks like a fastball coming in and disappears. I call him a fifth infielder. He wanted to sign with the National League team in part because he wanted a hit. And of course, he's a very good defender. Matt Adams now. Takes a strike. Well, he is throwing the ball hard, Bob. He's typically, that four seam fastball, he's going to sit at 93. We've seen 95 and 96 already. When he's had trouble, like a lot of pitchers, it's early in a game. It's almost as if he has to go through his pitches and find out what's working. Right now, it's the fastball. Adams rolls one toward Gordon who's back on the outfield grass but Matt doesn't run well and that'll do it for the Cardinals in the top of the first. Jay is stranded at second. Dodgers coming up when we come back.
script. It was the Cardinals who came back from a 6-1 deficit against Clayton Kershaw, no less, to win it 10-9. Here's the Dodgers' Geico starting lineup. They were second in the National League in runs scored, but that has to come with an asterisk. Number one, the altitude-aided Colorado Rockies. A major league best six runs per game at home, a major league worst three runs per game on the road for the Rockies. D. Gordon steps in against Lance Lynn. Matt Carpenter in close at third. Gordon leads the major leagues in the following jackrabbit categories. Stolen bases, 64. Triples, 12. Infield hits, 55. Bunt hits, 20. Out of play, 0-2. When the latter two you gave Bob with the punt hits and infield hits has really transformed Pete Gordon's game. You see him hit the ball the other way, really working on getting on top of that baseball. And that's really an old school term in this day and age when everybody wants to stay through the ball and hit it the other way, driving it. He wants to hit the ball and outrun things at times. One and two. Gordon spent most of last year with the Albuquerque Isotopes. They knew he could run. The question was, could he learn to slap the ball around, hit it on the ground, make use of that speed? And he's emerged as a big league star. Swing and a miss, strike three. Now let's take a look at the Dodgers' keys to the game. Was it by Chrysler facing Lance Lynn? I call it a fastball feast. 80% of his pitches are going to be two seam and four seam fastballs. Now, how can he get away with that? He uses all four quadrants of the plate in and out, up and down. And he's a great traffic cop. What's that mean? Well, he's allowed only one stolen base all year and only one home run with a runner on base. That was way back in April. Now he takes the measure of Yasiel Puig. A Bo Jackson like combination of speed and power. Lost one wide of first. Adams has no play. Yasiel Puig is so charismatic, so compelling, he's already emerged as a star well before he becomes a truly polished player. But just on raw ability, he can do some miraculous things and also do some head scratching things. <laughs> yes, he can. Often in the same game. Bouncing ball foul 0 and 2 but but I like the point you made about not polished yet because we're watching a guy who was rushed to the big leagues and he's made all his mistakes on the grand stage that most guys would make in front of a thousand people in double A triple A ball and he's doing it here on the big stage he's still only 23 years old and we've watched him now for over a year and a half. by much one and two the plate umpire Rob Drake has a history with Yadier Molina who's crouching in front of him back in 2011 they were jawing at each other a little spray of spittle emerged from the overheated Molina he said it was unintentional they sat him down for five games that was the suspension that would not have been Tony La Russa's choice at the time that wasn't all that close but the fans are mindful of what happened yesterday See Yasiel Pui, he's gonna milk it anyway. This is a fastball, he just got underneath, sails up and in. No intention. Pui was staring Lynn down for a few moments, and now he becomes the second strikeout victim of the bottom of the first. He and Yadi are getting into it because Pui stood there, and I'm sure Yadi said something now. You're talking about Spittle, we had a little bit yesterday, but. Yachty's controlling this whole thing. I, I, you know, they really got, a, got into his head right there. Man, man. Anytime you get a ball in your head, yeah, you're going to be upset. And as, lo as the long time he stood there, then they came back with a nasty slider away. This will be interesting to watch as the game continues. Well, to me, this is part of the growth process of Yasiel Queen. you got to let that go. There's no intention from Lance Lynn. That's what Yachty Amelina is saying. Go away. Yeah, but we don't know what was being said when he was standing in the box. That was the key to it. Gonzalez and Molina were at each other's throats yesterday. 
as Gonzalez stepped into the box he took exception to Puig being plunked Molina took exception to Gonzalez in his view not respecting him he strokes one to center back goes Jay on the run and makes a fine play to end the Dodger first no score after one at Chavez Ravine This Division Series telecast on MLB Network is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. And sponsored in part by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Here's to Budweiser and here's to baseball. And by Expedia, whatever trip you can imagine, all in one place. Expedia, find yours. We find ourselves in the top of the second, no score. And a ball outside to Johnny Peralta. Peralta caught up a year ago in the biogenesis situation, suspended for... The latter portions of the season signed as a free agent by the Cardinals and he's paid big dividends with 21 home runs. Same number that Hanley Ramirez the Dodger shortstop had the only shortstop in the majors with more the Nationals Ian Desmond he hit 24. Well he's an offensive player that's why they went out to get it they wanted that offense at this position they knew that they, they were going to be short. They needed him to bring up the, the offense. That one floats in there at 71, a called strike. Tom, this is the arsenal you were talking about. Well, it's, he's got two versions of that, slow and slower. He's got one actually slower than that one, but that will keep a hitter back. You see slider fastball a lot, but that is the equalizer. And the one-two pitch. In the air to right, closing ground on it is Kemp, and he makes the play. Tell you what, we've seen two great plays. John Jay's play out there in center in the last half inning, and that play by Matt Kemp. Center fielder playing right field, basically. It's a great play. Not the defender he once was, doesn't cover as much ground as he once did, which is why he's better suited to right, and Puig has been moved to center. Nice play there. 
Who's for Molina already a focal point in this series. That's a strike. So far, AJ Ellis, the catcher, almost every pitch has set up on the outside corner. Very different from what we saw with Clayton Kershaw, who likes to work inside. And so far, Granke on the money with fastball slider away. Now, time to go in. And this ball is hammered to left, but it's going to stay in the yard. Carl Crawford, not quite to the track, makes the catch. Apparently Crawford thought that was the third out. Not so fast. Yeah, he, he did. Look at Quick. Hey, settle down. It's okay. It's okay. I'll tell you what, that ball off the bat looked like it was going to get a chance to get out of here. Carl going to make a nice little catch to start the. Actually, he's just deking us. He knows. Hey, I know there's only two out. <laughs> did you say Yasiel Puig was settling down a teammate? How about that? That was funny. This is a strange postseason. Here's Colton Wong, Uribe in on the grass, and Greinke just throwing strike after strike. It's amazing, and it's with every pitch, and he's got the best fastball, Bob, I've seen him have in two years. He's been 95 uh, most of the, the first two innings. Oh, and two. As we mentioned, shift tracks in the upper right-hand corner, but we haven't seen a shift on any hitter yet. And they've been so prevalent throughout Major League Baseball most of the year. Well, I felt like when it came to postseason, that was going to go away a lot because one base runner can change everything. You can't have that opportunity for a guy to get a cheap hit. Way upstairs at 94, 1 and 2. We asked Don Mattingly before the game if he had any second thoughts about not hooking Clayton Kershaw earlier in that seventh inning. He said, no, I went out, talked to him. He said, I'm good. I took his word for it. He didn't think he was tiring. They check at third, and Wong didn't go. Two and two. He didn't think he was tiring. It was a warm late afternoon, but nonetheless, he hadn't reached 100 pitches, and he is Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, you don't expect uh, what happened in the seventh inning last night to happen to him in that situation. You think he's going to pitch through it? I know a lot of people were second guessing Donnie being leaving him in the game. I, I would have done the same thing. I thought it was the right move. Got a little piece of it and hangs in at two and two. Plus another consideration the Dodgers if they have a weakness the most glaring one is the bridge from their starter to Kenley Jansen the closer. So their middle to late options before they get to the ninth are not all that appealing. Right. So you go who do I want. Do I want to stay with this guy or I want to go to that pin. Wong is jammed. That's a fair ball. Gonzalez has it and takes it himself. After one and a half, no score at Dodger Stadium.
Blitz is presented by Geico with Harold Reynolds, Tom Fiducci, and Ken Rosenthal, Bob Costas at Dodger Stadium. Dodgers went in order in the first. Their cleanup man, Matt Kemp, will start it in the bottom of the second. Just when some people were not perhaps writing Matt Kemp off, but were prepared to consign him to less than all-star status, he came alive in the second half of the season. Don Mattingly told us before the game, he straightened up his stance. He's standing more upright in the box. Mark McGuire had tried to get him to do that earlier. And he had a second half of the season reminiscent of his near MVP form of three years ago. Yeah, I mean, Donnie made it clear, too. When you have as many injuries as Matt did, he had shoulder surgery, the ankle. All of a sudden, you're trying to find how your body can stand there and be aggressive and still be able to have that center of gravity. And he turned his body out of Kelter, and he finally got him straight up like you were talking about. And he's taken off. Lynn ahead of him 0 and 2 and fires that one at 96 high and away. I think the big thing was the shoulder. You know he's a guy that's going to swing front arm and be able to finish. Look at the numbers there. The average 309 to 17 home runs. Look at this half splits. He's been on fire the second half. This is the all star player that we remember. The ground ball to short. It comes up for Peralta who takes care of count. Well let's take a look at the defense. Chance to look at the Cardinals last night. You got a chance to see Kozar and Koza at second base. And tonight you got Colton Wong back out there. But this is their normal, their best lineup you're going to have. We watched John Jay run it down in the outfield. And Grucek out in the right field is more of a center fielder. He's got that kind of range. So you're going to see these guys catch the baseball. Both these clubs catch the ball. And I give the defensive edge, I would say, to the Cardinals. They're a little bit more reliable, I would guess, if you're talking about defense. Often injured, Anley Ramirez can still make an impact when he's in there. He hit 283 with 13 home runs. At 95, a ball and a strike. Yeah, Hanley says that ball's up. That's the four-seam fastball from Lynn. It was a great show. The out that he got Kemp on was the two-seamer. That's the four-seamer at the top of the zone. That's why he's so difficult to hit despite so many fastballs. They're really different kind of fastballs. Fouled away. Well, according to pitch tracks, he throws his fastball one variety or another close to 80 percent of the time and the only starting pitcher in baseball who uses the fastball more frequently the veteran Bartolo Colon. Yeah and Colon it's almost entirely all two seam fastball so that is a separator as well. The sinker he's thrown almost 900 of them this year. This is how good it is Bob. No home runs allowed on his two seamer. Wow. Ahead of Ramirez one and two. I think the other thing when I look at that fastball that was called up and in on Hanley he's gone back inside we saw and we've talked about what happened last night here with the ball that hit Puig rushed Puig back in the first at bat in the first inning and then he comes in and gets a strike on Hanley now that opens up the outside half like we saw with Puig striking out on the slider so Lynn is able to get that pitch inside and still go in there it opens up his ability to attack the Dodger hitters. A little topper, Carpenter comes charging in, bare hands, throws, safe. I think that's what we forget about Hanley is he can get down the line. That's a heck of a play by Carpenter. He comes in, this ball's going to kick on him, and this is the experience that he, of him playing third base. Gets rid of it, the bare hand. It's close, but I thought he got there. Got out of the box really well, sounded like a broken bat. Smelled a hit and barely gets it. There's the definitive view. He was safe. Absolutely. As a right-handed hitter, when you're swinging at that ball and you're leaning towards first, that was what was able to propel him down that direction and be able to beat that out. Good call by the first base umpire, Dale Scott. It brings up the sizzling hot Carl Crawford. He hit over 400 in the season's last seven weeks to finish at exactly 300 for the year. Bob, I was saying last night, 
what people got to start re realizing about Carl Crawford in the postseason. He's letting the bat fly. This isn't the bunt and run slap the ball guy that you may have saw years ago in Tampa. He's got some pop now. Went two for four in game one yesterday. Everybody knows how good Yadier Molina is. In terms of nailing would be base stealers. 45% of those who have tried have been cut down. But actually comparatively few even bother. Since he became their starting catcher in 2005, there have been fewer than 700 stolen base attempts against the Cardinals. The next fewest team, Minnesota, 400 behind that, about 1,050 against the Twins. So he doesn't just cut it down. In many cases, he takes it away completely. There it is. I think Lance Lynn appreciates that all year long. Only four attempted stolen bases with Lance Lynn on the mound. One successful. And guys, a lot of it is not even to throw down a second. It's the threat of him picking the off at first. And that's what Pudge Rodriguez was so great about when he was catching as well. You can't get a lead. Look at the lead Hanley has because he doesn't want to have a secondary lead that takes him off the base too far. And that's the third strikeout for Lance Lynn. Tremendous amount of swings and misses on the four seam fastball. That looked like the two seamer running away. I think the stolen base, if it's in order at all, more in order here with Crawford, left handed hitter. You give him the right side. Now, with two outs, if you're thinking about it, better option than with Crawford and one out. Molina looking toward Matheny. It's foul back. Matheny is quick to credit the Cardinal pitchers, and they teach it throughout the organization. They are so quick to the plate with runners on base. As great as Molina is, if the pitching staff, generally speaking, was not so effective in that regard, then Molina wouldn't do quite as well as he has. No doubt. And, and again, all these things come into play. And if you look at Hanley Ramirez's lead, we're wasting our time even showing him with the lead he has. I mean, it's incredible. Look at this. He takes one and a half steps. That's it. That's because he didn't want to get too far off on the pitch after it goes past the batter. All and two to Uribe with 311 for the season. And that's Lent playing it too. That ball 96, man. The arms in Major League Baseball, Bob, are incredible. Got to be the best that we've seen in any generation. As a group, no question. Used to be that 90 was a plus fastball. Now it's average. Yeah. Carpenter near the line at third. One and two to Uribe, who already has World Series rings as a member of the White Sox in 05 and the Giants in 2010. He's been a good player. You know, Donnie loves him at third base, but the leadership, Tom, I think him bringing the, the leadership has really changed this. The dynamic of this oh, team, especially as it relates to Yasiel Kui. Generally, in the clubhouse, you see one, you see the other right next to him. Two and two. I would like to see Hanley get a little bit of a lead, even if you're not going to run, because it makes the pitcher think about something. Lynn has been able to just lock in on the hitter and not worry about the base runner. We have a beach ball here in Southern California, Bob, the loose in left field. You ever been out there hitting those around? They are in abundant supply in these parts. <laughs> The 2 2 pitch. Foul to the screen. Uh, this is a great matchup because your rebate, like a lot of the Dodgers, great fastball hitter. You saw Lynn shake from the cutter to go back upstairs. A lot of hitters have trouble climbing the ladder on that four seamer. Not this guy, your rebate. He likes it up there and he can catch up to 95 upstairs. again with that cautious lead as Adams holds him on. Full count and 
now, of course, she will be going. A.J. Ellis is on deck. And this is where you look to the outfield arms. You know, you start thinking about if a ball's hitting the gap, will he have an ability to be able to score from first base? And he's hit the left center field gap. I think he's got a great shot. Right center field, maybe not so much. All three outfielders are fairly deep. Look to cut a ball in the gap off and keep Ramirez from scoring. It's a moot point. Four strikeouts and two innings of work for Lance Lynn. Santa Monica. Wrong song, but one of the reasons Randy Newman said you gotta love LA. Santa Monica Boulevard. There it is, Harold. Uh-huh. Nice. Beautiful. Three matchups on TBS tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern. The Orioles up 2-0 take on the Tigers at Comerica Park. Then at 7.30 Eastern, the Angels battle the Royals in Kansas City. Both games tomorrow on TBS. Randall Gritchett starts it in the Cardinal third. His first postseason at bat happened to be against Clayton Kershaw. It happened to turn out to be a home run. And it earned him a right to play tonight against Grinky. Replacing Oscar Tavares, he's got the chance. And with a left-hander, Hung Jin Ryu set for game three in St. Louis, Tavares might see only bench duty in this series. Well, it sounded like even if he didn't hit the home run in game one, this was his start. Mike Matheny made it clear, Richick, much better defender than Oscar Tavares. And in playoff baseball, that counts. A pop in the shallow right, Kemp coming in behind Gordon. And he takes it. All right, let's take a look at the defense. You saw Matt Kemp make that catch right there. As you look around the defense, the Dodgers, I think the key is at first base. Adrian Gonzalez picks everything. He makes all the infielders better. You'll see Hanley Ramirez, if the Dodgers have a lead, remove for Rojas to come in late and play defense. They've got a opportunity in the outfield with Puig. 
who cuts balls off. The opportunity is Andre Ethier will make some replacements as well. So we may see some changes as the game goes on. Here's a potential difference in this game. Zach Greinke is a very good hitting pitcher. Lance Lynn is beyond woeful. He had 067 this year. Two points better than his career mark of 065. Bad that is Bob 200 more than 200 plate appearances the lowest among any active player 065 the seventh lowest of all time and in the minor leagues his batting average 065 so he's consistent so for once minor league numbers carried over Greinke having little to fear dispatches him on three pitches that's his second Strike out of the night, and we check with Greg Amsinger. All right, Greg, thanks. Seems like almost every one of these games. Beginning with Kansas City and Oakland in that wild wild card playoff and almost all the division series games are games to remember. And I tell you what in that series 14th inning the Nationals are playing for their lives. They go down 0 2 to go to San Francisco and they still haven't faced Bumgarner yet. They're in a tough tough tread to get back. A lot of long games no problem pace of play. Well, yesterday's game, a 10 9 affair, took almost four hours, 357. Nobody complained about the length of the pace because a lot was going on. People getting their money's worth. See Matt Carpenter here. He needs and wants a typical Matt Carpenter at bat. Always among the league leaders in taking pitches. His pitcher just made the second out of the inning. inning. Let him sit down, relax, gather himself. He wants to be up there for a while. Led the league in walks with 95. Off the corner. It was a good height, so everybody's screaming here in Dodger Stadium, but it's off the plate. In there, Carpenter yesterday, solo homer, and then a bases clearing, bases loaded double off Kershaw in the big seventh inning. An eight run frame for the Cardinals. We may see him take another pitch right here just because of, there is two outs and the pitcher needs to get back to the bench. They're throwing the changeup. Well, they check it third. And in the opinion of Jerry Lane, Carpenter didn't go, so he draws the two out walk. Well, that was interesting because Carpenter's body language told you that he thought he swung. Mm -hmm. Typically, a guy will drop the bat and don't leave it in the umpire's hands. Watch Carpenter here. Did he check? Well, that's real close. It's close. And he's hanging around a while. That's still in hand. Yeah, he wasn't trying to sell it. Might have gotten a gift. Mattingly thought so. Here's Jay, who was hit by a pitch in the first. He laces one, and Gordon leaps to snare it. Hey, D. Gordon, a little upset I didn't mention him in the defense. Okay, Bob, you know what he can do? He can get up. Way up. <laughs> way, way up. Nice play by D. Gordon.
Yeah, Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. AJ Ellis hobbled by a bad knee much of the year, hit below 200 at 191, and had his best day or night of the season in the first game of the postseason for the Dodgers when he went four for five yesterday with a homer. Yeah, he had a great night. And you know what? His responsibility of catching both these, these great pitchers, too, is to work that umpire. You see him working there, right, too. He's got to be careful, obviously, as a catcher himself. Doesn't work too hard. He thought the ball was away. He'll file that away when Zach Greinke wants that pitch. I mean, the immediate conversation he turns around and says, Are we going to get that pitch, too? Two and one. There's little doubt that Zach Greinke. Is the best number two starter in the major leagues. Certainly nobody better out of that number two slot. But his opponent tonight, Lance Lynn, is no slouch. 15 and 10 this year and last. 18 and 7 in his first full season in 2012. And over that three year span, the only National League starters with more victories than Lance Lynn are Adam Wainwright and Clayton Kershaw. That's a pretty heavy company. I, I love the fact that he grinds through games, he keeps it. With an opportunity to win, very much like Adam Wainwright does for the Cardinals. In the air to right center field, John Jay is on the run, and back there is Grichik, and neither one can get it. And AJ Ellis stays hot. He's at second, thinks about three, but then slams on the brakes. How about that? He's five for six in the series. Tell you what, with this hot weather, that ball took off. It did. I really thought Gruchek had a chance to get it. That's why he's out there. And I talked about it before, center fielder playing right. He almost makes this catch with a long ways to get it. But that ball got about 15 feet from the track and it took off. You see him make the adjustment right there? That's because of the warm weather, the backspin. That ball took off another extra 15 feet. It's a big knock. Now they're set up the way they want to. Runner in second base. You got Drinky coming up. You can move the runner with a bunt. Big play. Drinky hit 200 on 12 for 60 for the year with a homer and six doubles. He had four successful sacrifices. That little quick conversation that Carpenter and Lynn have is who's going to field this ball because it's not a force play at third. It has to be a tag. So make sure they give us an out and take the out. He squares, pulls back, and takes a ball. Last year, Greinke was the Silver Slugger winner among National League pitchers. He hit 328 for the season. He's an athlete, man. We you know, in Tom notes, they talked about defense. It's interesting how they're shifting around now. They're trying to take away because A.J. Ellis doesn't run very well. They're trying to go ahead and almost have a wheel play on effectively of trying to force Grinky to swing the bat. See he's turning around saying right now they play like that. You want me to swing? Look where the defense is positioned. The shortstop Peralta is all the way over. You got Carpenter in. They're basically saying we don't think A.J. Ellis can outrun us. Here they come crashing. He out. pulls back and he slaps one to right. The drops in front of Jay. Or in front of Gritchick for a base hit, and Ellis will stop at third. That is court awareness. We talked about a great athlete, Bob. You said 328. Look, they try to take away the bunt, force him to swing the bat. That's why he turned around and said, It's an out if I put it down. They're going to throw AJ out. This is a great piece of hitting. I'll turn around, I'll butcher boy, and just slap it to the right side. Well, Harold, that's why I don't like the play. They telegraph the play to a pitcher who can handle the bat well. That's an easy call for the Dodgers to let Grinky read the defense and swing. And when you are, Bob, you call this a pitcher in the ninth spot in the National League is a difference maker when you can swing the bat. The Dodgers have it in Grinky. Here's D. Gordon. Struck out in the first. Carpenter close at third. They're back in the middle of the diamond. They'll give up the run. People think we should have the DH all the time. That changes the game. You know, it's, it's a strategy right there. Don't get me started. <laughs> Two and all.
I, I'll keep dialed in at this moment. First and third, no outs. I, I won't take you down that road yet. The National League game <laughs> is a more textured and interesting game. End of discussion. You know, and you know, you think about a sinker ball pitcher who's got that great two seamer, D. Gordon, grounded into only three double plays all year. Well, really, if you're D. Gordon, you want him to put the ball in play. Really, that, especially he's not going to double him up. That's why he's swinging 2 and 0. You know, interesting, his first time up, Lance Lynn, he doesn't throw a lot of curveballs. He threw two to D. Gordon. We saw Adam Wainwright, of course, he features the curveball, steady diet of curveballs to D. Gordon. That seems to be the book that they've come up with. We're going to throw the breaking ball, but if you get him in a situation like this, you got to go with your best pick. Gordon is one for ten with four strikeouts in his career against Lance Lynn. Two and two. Now we might see that breaking ball, Tom, you're talking about as a chance to put him away with the strikeout. This is one of those situations where being a strikeout pitcher pays off. Now you still set yourself up for a double play with the next hitter to get out of the inning. Lynn checks Ellis and comes home to Gordon, who hangs in there. You know, it's interesting in this situation. First and third, infield back in the middle. Most hitters thinking fly ball, big part of the field. I think with D. Gordon, he can still think ground ball and avoid a double play. I think more than anything, D. Gordon needs to think contact. He puts the ball in play, you're probably going to pick up a run. The strikeout does you no good as a Dodger, does a great help as a Carver. Ellis at third, Frankie at first. Nobody out, no score, bottom of the third. And another foul ball. Lance Lynn by now is used to situations like this. He has less than four full major league seasons, but this is already the ninth postseason series in which he has appeared. Last year in the NLCS, he beat the Dodgers twice once as a starter and once out of the bullpen. Another 2 2 pitch. A slow roller. The oh. tag, the flip. They got the double play. That's a great play by Colton Wong. There's not a whole lot Grinky can do. If anything, you back up, maybe get into a double play. You don't want to do that with your pitcher and get him running around in the middle of a, of a pickle. So he tries to stop and back it up. Right here, Colton Wong makes a great run. Oh, he didn't oh look at that. Tagged him with the glove. They might replay this. There should be a call from down in that Dodger dugout. Take a look at this. Whoa. And there's Tim Wallach on the phone. Well, and that's never tagged the ball. And that's the changes that we have. Here it comes. A reviewable play. He didn't tag him. You got to touch him with the baseball. You can't touch him with the glove. He touches him with the glove. The ball's got to be either in that glove or touch him with the ball. Oh, this is clear cut. There's no question about it. Yep. So we're going to have a runner at second. There's a crew chief, Del, Del Scott. They'll go back and look at this. Right. There's no question they will overturn this and award Frankie second base. See, I, I, I thought Colton Wong was in a hurry to go ahead and get that double play, and you rush because of D. Gordon's speed. He's got to go ahead and at least make sure you cut off Grinky to keep that run from sec that runner going to second base. If D. Gordon beats it, he beats it. But you got to keep that possibility of the next guy being in scoring position, especially when you're headed to Puig, then to Gonzalez in the middle of that order. And give credit to D. Gordon because Lynn did go to the curveball and he did put it in play and do his job. It's interesting. The Baltimore Orioles under Buck Showalter, the only team I've seen, teaches their runners on the play to slide into the fielder as if you were breaking up a double play at the bag at second base. I think it's a brilliant move. I'm shocked nobody else in baseball does it. It's a legal move. Break up a double play in between bases the same as you would at the bag. Yeah, the difference though, you got the pitcher running here in Grinky. More than anything, you don't want him to get hurt. But Bob, replay has come into effect in this series. 
as it should when you have this technology especially in the postseason you don't want to play like that to go uncorrected and the umpires like it too you think Don Denkinger doesn't wish they had replay in 85 you think Jim Joyce doesn't wish they had replay when he inadvertently cost Colorado a perfect game in Detroit so here's what happens the run had scored in any case, but now D. Gordon gets an RBI. He wouldn't have had it been a double play. And Greinke is put at second. And this was an instant replay review sponsored by Samsung. So we ruled out a fielder's choice? Yes, because he doesn't get an error on that. Which right. Really, you probably think it should be an error. But Mental error. Yeah. But that goes back to D. Gordon putting the ball in play. You know, if he puts the ball in play, you're not going to double him up, or at least it's going to be difficult. You're going to pick up that run. And because he put the ball in play, you pick up the run. So Greinke, who runs pretty well as a second now, with one out and a run home in the Dodger third. We struck out on the first. Struck out with a tying run at third to end the game as Trevor Rosenthal went to that triple digit heat against him and finished off a 10 9 Cardinal win. Yeah, Trevor Rosenthal was phenomenal 97, 98, 99, and hit 100 a couple different times. That's tough to catch up to. You see Lynn go to the slider right there. I think he might see a steady diet of breaking balls. Them always to attack with that fastball, to back it up with the cutter. Tremendous confidence. One of the few pitchers you can see in the game today that loves to pitch upstairs with the fastball. I, I think he continues to challenge Puig in this situation. He's going to get hurt with fastball. As long as he keeps it above the hands. One on, one out, one in, and a 1 1 pitch coming to Yasiel Puig. You know what baseball lacks at this point, and it's not all that important, but in football, that call would have been explained to the crowd. Probably yes. most of them figured it out, but it's not as obvious as some replay reviews, and you would like to see the umpire tell these 50,000 plus exactly what went on. I totally agree. That's the one step that is missing. They've made some great adjustments and great strides this year with replay, but we need to bring that incorporated as well. That was his pitch. By that first pitch that he threw early in the game, they busted Puig in. They got him away from looking in. That's a ball he's got to hit right here. 2-1. You're looking for a fastball. It's right there. Center cut. That is the ball that he needed to be swinging at. Because they pounded him away and been in and out on him, they pulled him on a pitch he should have been ready to hit. The 2-2 pitch. There is the fifth strikeout of the night for Lance Lynn. And the second time he's gotten Puig. The ball had great movement. Yasiel Puig, still a young player who needs to control the moment. Couldn't stay off Rosenthal's high heater last night. That Carpenter talked about breathing and slowing the game down in his big at bats. And this was just challenge city right here from Lance Lynn at 97. He should be yelling at himself for taking the 2 1 fastball because that was the pitch that, that he should have hit. Figured out. He's young. With two out, an RBI spot for the Majors' leading RBI man, Adrian Gonzalez, knocked home 116 this year. Seven of the last eight years, he's topped 100, and the one season he didn't, he had 99. I'll tell you, Bob, we talk about intelligent hitters. He's one of the smartest hitters I've, I've watched in years because he does a great job of setting up pitchers and also being able to pick out what he wants to hit. Hit the ball right on the nose his first time off but Jay ran it down in center field. I've always thought one of the tougher calls for a third base coach in this case Lorenzo Bundy is when you have a starting pitcher at second base. Another two outs tendency is always to send the runner. That will make you think twice on a hard hit ball. Colton Wong way back on the outfield grass at second base. Yeah, with Colton Wong out there in the outfield, it really makes it tough on the third base coach. Because now 
by the time he catches that grounder, say it's not hit a one hop bullet, Brinky's going to be at third, maybe coming around. Do you challenge? Do you hold? Normally that would be easily through the infield and onto the outfield. Brinky edging away from second now. And Ling brings home the 2 1 pitch and gets the corner with it, 2 and 2. Well, sometimes as a hitter, when you know they're pounding you a certain direction, you're looking for that ball off the plate. You get that complaint. That ball's off the plate, and Adrian sees that well because he's looking out that direction. Gonzalez homered off the left-hander Randy Choate yesterday. Choate normally just murder on left-handed hitters. Play. The energy in this ballpark, Bob, is incredible. Supposedly, LA sports fans are laid back. Not tonight. The Laker game came to baseball. Showtime. Well, Magic's in the house. As well, he should be. Would that be Ice Cube? Yes, it was. Got another movie coming out, Paul. That's Conan. Conan. So, oh, this is Hollywood. The thing about this is, these guys came up to the booth to see Bob before the game. You hang with everybody. Well, Cube didn't. Cube was chilling. Larry did. Larry King did. Okay. Mary Hart, to his left, did not. <laughs> Ripped through the middle of base hit. Ranky will be able to score easily. The Dodgers will be up 2-0 in the RBI machine. Adrian Gonzalez comes through again. You know, great piece of hitting. Now they continue to pound him outside. And Adrian just said, hey, I'm going to look out there. This ball comes back over the plate enough time for him to handle it and take it back up the middle. But you can't live in one lane with one pitch against Gonzalez. Stayed away the entire at bat. This one gets a little more of the plate. When I asked Adrian Gonzalez the key to hitting with men on base. He said the key is to think small. We just watched Yasiel Puig think big, and we saw Adrian Gonzalez think small. It's all they needed was a base hit. So here's Kemp, who grounded a short his first time up. He missed the NLCS last year with a bad ankle when these two teams hooked up. Riding a hot streak coming into this year's playoffs, he made his presence felt in game one with three base hits. Well, he's a difference maker on this team, no doubt. That was one of the, that is the Matt Kemp, the swing and miss, but the form and the finish is the Matt Kemp that we've come to watch through the year. He staked to at least a 2 nothing lead before he goes back to the mound. Obviously a lot of teams wanted Zach Greinke on the free agent market two years ago. He preferred the National League to play this kind of game. Get on base, swing the bat. Couldn't catch up with the 95 mile per hour heat upstairs. We have watched power versus power in this series. Guys are not afraid to challenge with some great fastballs we've been watching. What was that percentage? Lance Lynn with his fastballs. He just reaches back and says, Here it is. 79%. And you can see the difference. You know, first time up, he got Kemp on the two seamer, attacking him with the four seamers. These pitches are out of the zone, but that's where he wants to put it. Entice Kemp into chasing those pitches, and that's why his swing and miss rate on four seam fastballs much higher than league average. And the slider here. 
Shallow right field. Gritchick coming in, and he gets there. So the Dodgers settle for two in the third. And looking to even the series at a game apiece, they lead 2-0 after three. is presented by Geico with Harold Reynolds, Tom Producci, Ken Rosenthal, Bob Costas at Dodger Stadium, where the Dodgers have taken a 2-0 lead after three. Part of the order for the Cardinals in the fourth, Holiday, Adams, and Peralta. To give you an idea of how good Zach Greinke has been, after leaving Kansas City, and the Royals, of course, have come alive this year, but during Greinke's entire tenure there, they never had a winning season. So he was 60 and 67 overall with Kansas City. But with Milwaukee, briefly with the Angels, and now with the Dodgers, 63 and 23. Wow. That's out of play. He won the Cy Young Award in 2009 with Kansas City. He went 16 and 8 and threw three shutouts. For a team that overall was 65 and 97. <laughs> Steve Carlton type stuff right there. I've always kept a close eye on pitchers after they've been on the bases for a very long time the next inning. They don't worry about that much with Frankie, He's such a good athlete. Ahead of Holiday 0 2. And finishes him off. Two at bats, two K's for Holiday. Between innings, we spoke with Don Mattingly, starting with the easy call on his part to challenge the play at second base. Yeah, John, uh, John Pratt on the video inside. Uh, we were kind of checking on the one with D, and uh, we were just holding Yasiel back, letting him take a look at it, and then we seen that. So, uh, yeah, a pretty easy one. How you feel about Grinky right now, Don? Not good. He's throwing the ball good. Looks like he's got good velocity. He's locating. 
uh, not wasting any time throwing strikes. And uh, the time when Zach gets in trouble and he's nibbling on the edges, he's, he's attacking the zone. Uh, you feel good right now. Let me ask you about the bunt, uh, the butcher boy, the situation. How'd you change that to let him swing? It's just an automatic for there. You know, if they're going to come and trap we, and, and take the bunt away, then then we're going to swing the bat there. If he's got to put it in place somewhere, uh, it's a pretty good chance you're going to get a hit. Johnny, the offense wasn't a problem in game one. What about the approach tonight so far, against Lynn? It's been good. Uh, the guys are fighting, and that's what we want. E each guy has to have that fight. Uh, got his pitches up a little bit. Um, you know, got a couple on the board, so let's keep going. Thanks, Don. All right. Matt Adams at the plate with a count now of one and two, and the Dodgers do shift on him. D. Gordon, the second baseman, is in short right field. Gonzalez deep at first base. The third baseman, Juan Uribe, on the right side of second base, and only the shortstop, Henry Ramirez, on the left side of the infield. You can see the alignment on shift tracks there. It's interesting. They do this sometimes against Adrian Gonzalez. And I asked them, oh, why not bunt sometimes? Of course, they're actually giving you that hit. Adams hits one in the air to left center field. And it's Carl Crawford for the catch. And his point to me was, I am a base clogger. And that's pretty much much Matt Adams is. So if you're on first base with one out, chances are it's going to take two hits to score you anyway. So the better play in Adrian Gonzalez's mind is to swing and try to split the gap in the outfield and forget about getting on base for the bunt. Yeah, but the flip side of that, we talked to the Cardinals yesterday about it, and they didn't have to shift on Adrian as much because he bunted. They saw him bunt a lot, and he's taken that away, so they had to honor it. Straight up alignment now for Peralta, who bats with two out and nobody on. Generally speaking, Matt Adams has been better than most at foiling those shifts. And he took the ball to left field, but in the air that time. He smoked that ball, too. It's not carrying the left field like it was to right center. No, it's not. There have been a couple of balls hit out toward left this year, this, this evening, that sounded good off the bat and then died. right now this is the best I've seen him I'm curious well, Donnie time. mentioned it's velocity right there he went to the two seamer and tried to run it inside on Peralta he's much more comfortable pitching to the glove side of the plate no problems getting the fastball away back in on Peralta I think the velocity Harold is what stands out for me typically he'll sit at 93 he's got an extra tick or two on that tonight feeling very strong He's average fastball velocity during the season just under 92. He's been in the mid 90s tonight. Peralta lifts one to center. Puig has it. Frankie is not allowed to hit through four. And he leads it 2 nothing.
MLB.com slash season tickets to reserve your seat today. A prime seat for Hall of Famer Dave Winfield in attendance tonight. The Dodgers come up against Lance Lynn on the bottom of the fourth. Ramirez will start it, followed by Crawford and Uribe. Hanley had an infield hit and is only at bat so far. Been treated some great baseball. Yesterday's game was terrific. This is a lot of fun. It's fantastic. It's moving. The guys are competing. And the Giants and Nationals are in the 15th. Still tied at one. Hit sharply. Backhanded by Peralta from the outfield grass. He's got him. Between innings, we talked with Mike Matheny. He started out by asking him about the way his team reacted after pulling that game out yesterday. Well, without, I think, as yeah, much of a surprise to you guys, it was, uh, it was pretty lively in there. And I mean, the, the odds of, of that happening for any team against any pitcher aren't real high. And uh, they know that they uh, really stuck their noses in there and, and fought it out. And whenever they do that, they, they need to celebrate a little bit. So it was a great atmosphere. Mike, explain the decision to take the bunt away from Zach Renke and run a wheel play there. Yeah, that wasn't really a full wheel. That's kind of a hybrid where we let our middle infielders kind of read the bat. Uh, we start in a position where we can use the wheel, um, but we, we uh, have them hold their ground until they see the, the bunt square around. There's nothing you can do and throw the really infield like that. Yeah, let's talk about Lance Land real quick, Mike. Uh, it looks like the velocity is great. He's challenging guys. You feeling good about him? Yeah, he looks good. And uh, just had a little bit of trouble with that last one. And uh, a couple things not quite uh, go the way we wanted to. A little misplay in the middle. But uh, overall, the velocity looks good. He's using his off speed pitches. The curveball's been pretty sharp today, too. And uh, getting some swing and misses on his cutter slider. Thanks, Mike. All right, guys. Ramirez and Crawford have been retired on ground balls. And up comes Uribe, who struck out on the second. This is big if Lance Lynn can get them in and back in the dugout real quick. They're, they're aggressive. Carl Crawford with the first pitch ground out. Right here, Uribe swings at the first pitch. He got two quick outs already, Bob. And he's ahead of Uribe, 0 and 2. Just how good was Lance Lynn this year? 15 and 10, same as last year. But his ERA was more than a run per game lower. In 2014 and in 2013. Wow. Seven of his 10 losses came in games where he yielded two runs or one while he was in there. He's the hidden gem in this rotation. You know, everybody wants to talk about Wayne Wright, rightfully so. Uh, when they made the big trades, everybody that came over, what's going to happen to Lance Lynn? You look at the run support average. I mean, that's amazing. They, they hardly get any runs for this guy. He continues to win. This continues to be a fun matchup right here with Lynn's fourth seam fastball. And Uribe doesn't care where it is up in the zone. He's going to hack at it. Got him last time on the cutter, though. You see on shift tracks the way they defend him. Pole hitter guarding the line. Pretty rare you see a third baseman actually sitting on the line as if it was take away doubles, right? No doubles. That's incredible where Carpenter plays a regular positioning on your rebate. He must have stolen a lot of hits early in his big league career down that third baseline before they threw that guy right there. That's studying somebody's hitting tendencies right there. Lynn's 70th pitch of the night finishes Uribe and finishes the Dodger fourth. Lynn has put six strikeouts in the book, but he trails Greinke 2 nothing.
This Division Series game on MLB Network is brought to you by the new Samsung Galaxy Note 4. The next big thing is here and sponsored in part by the new dollar cravings menu at Taco Bell. Live Moss. And by Jaguar. See the new model of your lineup at your local Jaguar retailer. A.J. Ellis doubled off the wall in right center. His only time off. He's five for six in the series. But for the fact that it's his opposite number, Yadier Molina, I need to flip the scorecard over between innings. I enjoy your company so much, my mind wanders. Ellis crouches, Molina bats. Hey, Two and zero. Oh. You know it's so so crazy. I was, I was watching the the velocity of Zach Grinky. I didn't even hear you. The first pitch was a little curveball, a cut away at 71 miles an hour. I didn't even hear you talking. We can only that. hope the rest of the audience didn't hear it. <laughs> but I find that doubtful. Molina lined to left and is only at bat. Where he is from 96 to 71. I, I think the other thing Tommy's doing so well is he gets a guy in a count like he had Yachty, 2 and 0, and he's able to get a ball on the outside half where he's not looking for a fastball. He's doing a nice job of moving it in and out right there as a cutter at 87. Yeah, that slider's his best pitch. To me, that's what Clayton Kershaw went away from in the seventh inning yesterday. Granke is forcing hitters to cover a 25 mile an hour window of pitches. That's disrupting timing. Yesterday, when he was in trouble, Kershaw went slider fastball in a window of about six to seven miles an hour. In on his hands. Back to the mound, and Greinke throws him out. Well, because of the, the variation of speeds, you're able to get in on a guy like that because what happens, you got to honor 95. Just a look at the different speeds he's been able to do. Here's the fastball he throws by Holiday at 95. Here's the Peralta, the slow curve at 71. So you're going 71 to 95 tonight. And you got to figure it out. There's a cutter at 94. And then he comes back with this curveball at 75. So we've seen the fastball, the cutter, a slider that we saw in the last hitter, and, a, and the slow curve. He's got everything working tonight, Bob. And he works now to Colton Wong, who cuts and misses. He's 0 for 1. Power change up at 89. Everything, including now both sides of the plate. You saw him attack Peralta in, and he ate up Yadi Molina in. Not just the way, but both halves of the plate now. When you have a guy on like Zach Grinke, what a hitter tries to do is you eliminate pitches. If he's throwing a curveball, he can't throw it for a strike. I throw that out of my mind. I'm looking for the fastball and the cutter. And then the next thing you do is you eliminate sides of the plate because you can't cover everything. But when a guy is on like this, it's the most helpless position a hitter can be in. That's when you find yourself 0-2 like the Cardinals have done tonight. And Wong rips one down the right field line, and it's a fair ball for the Cardinals' first hit. He's on his way to second, and he'll stop there with a one-out double. Great piece of hitting. Got a fastball in, and for the first time, he made a mistake. I set him up so nice. <laughs> Talked about him eloquently. Perfect. You know, you leave guys, you got them guessing, wondering, and he throws a fastball down the middle. Colton Wong didn't miss it. That's, that's where you have to rewrite the scouting report because he threw that pitch exactly where A.J. Ellis wanted it. Up in the zone, above the hands. Nice piece of hitting by Colton Wong. First Cardinal hit, a one-out double. Brings up Gritchick, who fly to right in his only at-bat. This was a great trade for the Cardinals. You know, he was a throw in, so to speak, from the Angels in the trade, and they've got great production out of it. It was a matter of an opportunity. I mean, it's hard to say a number one pick was a throw in, but he was the back end of that deal. He had 245 overall splitting time between AAA and the Major Leagues, 245 with the Cardinals, but in 50 September at bats, he hit 320. And then began the postseason with a homer off Kershaw yesterday. Only thing I can think about is another guy that got from the Angels years ago and Jim Edmonds, who really blossomed. I think we'll see this kid blossom into that type of a player. Maybe not 40 home runs, but he's going to blossom and be that type of player. That's a really good. 
good take right there. You saw Granke double up on that. I call it a camouflage slider. Looks like a fastball to the last 10 feet and it dives out. Nice take. Good adjustment within and at bat by the hitter. Well, here's where I got in trouble last night when mm -hmm. runners at second base, the Cardinals were tattooing Kershaw, and I said, hey, they must be giving signs or tipping pitches, one of the two. That's the first time you saw Ellis now change the signs and mix it up. That's all I was saying. You can't continue to go with the same sequence when you have runners sitting at second base. You saw Grinky step off. Ellis went to a pattern. They changed their signs right away. And when Kershaw was getting hit like he was, the first thing for me instinctively as a former middle infielder, when I saw a pitcher getting hit like that, the base runners have to be giving something. Now the Cardinals and the Dodgers both have made it real clear to me today that wasn't happening. That was my personal instinct that I saw. Both Greinke and Wong appearing in at Ellis. And the 2-1 to Grichuk. Two and two. Yeah, the shake of the head right there. A.J. Ellis just wore this foul ball right off the mask. Yeah, he took one last night too. I don't know how these catchers do it. I really don't. Knocks the mask askew. Has to have his head buzzing a bit, and he barely reacts. Just shakes his head and gets back down on the crouch. That guy can appreciate it right there. Yachty's taking his bumps through the years. And a full count, a nearly automatic out. Lance Lynn on deck. That's yeah. <laughs> That's a new record for Granky today. He's down to 68. Went to the super slow curveball, and Grichik didn't bite. This is an important conversation. I don't think it's about science as much as it is. Remember, we got the pitcher on deck. It's the, the, we're not going to give in to him. And I think the eighth spot in the lineup in the major leagues in the National League is the most difficult place to hit because you're not going to, particularly when you have a Lance Lynn on deck who doesn't hit, you're not going to get a lot of great pitches to hit. I don't like young hitters typically in the eight hole. Hard to know when they're pitching and when they're not. A swing and a miss, the fourth strikeout for Zach Greinke. And that's the difference. Greinke was not giving in, as you said, Harold, and got him out on a pitch out of the zone. Hard for a young hitter to understand when they're going to attack you and when they're going to pitch around you. Perfect execution by Greinke. You could see the excitement. Uh, this is a tremendous pitch, and you know, as this is what makes AJ Ellis. I know he had a 191 batting average this year, but he's a pretty good hitter in that eight spot, and he understands I'm not going to get anything to hit with the pitcher behind me. Now I look breaking ball. With a young hitter, you're still going to stay aggressive and try to honor that 95. You threw him a nasty slider. Lance Lynn predictably struck out his first time up. You know, it's pretty amazing his average is as poor as it is because he. He looks good in the box. You know, some guys look like they can hit. As Larry Milburn used to say, he looks hitterish. <laughs> well, it's 6'5 and 240. You ought to swing hard just in case he hits it. Yeah. Which he rarely does. Well, Mike Matheny said it was a big game this year when he got his first complete game of his career. How about his first double this year? First extra base hit of his career off Jordan Zimmerman. He doesn't have a bad swing. I, I, he looks good. We'll work out from the spring. May take a lot of work <laughs> when you're 065 lifetime. He has seen six pitches and struck out twice. Five of the game for Grinky. Reason to cheer at Dodger Stadium. Home team looking to even the series. Up to zip.
my head here, but is the longest one in terms of innings in postseason history. That game between Houston and Atlanta in 2005, I think, which Houston eventually won. That was a game we saw Roger Clemens get up in the bullpen. Came into the game. You guys are good. I don't remember any of that. Good job. A.J. Ellis. Got to take me back to the 19th. I can't do it in the 200. <laughs> A.J. doubled to right center his first time up. Between innings, Stan Conte, the, doc, the uh, Dodgers director of medical services, came over and talked to Ellis, took a look at him because he took that foul back off his mask. There's Conte. He's keeping a close look on it at him right now, too. Everybody hyper aware these days in sports about head injuries and concussions. It's hard to get the true story of a warrior who obviously doesn't want to come out of the game. He's saying, I'm fine, I'm fine, but Stan's being firm with him, looking after the player. Yeah, and he sat him down, took him through a series of tests as well before he let him go back up. Now, Brian McCann, the Yankees catcher, told me he hates leading off innings. As a catcher, there's so much wear and tear. Now add this on top of it. Go grab your bat and go hit now. This is the ideal situation for the Dodgers. If he can do what he did last time. He pokes it toward the right side, but Wong is there. Ken Rosenthal is with us tonight. Ken. Thanks, Bob. Lance Lynn told me this week he finally figured out this season how to be the kind of competitor he wanted to be. Before, he would try not to rub people the wrong way, but often did. And Mike Matheny told us today that Lynn was prone to wild swings of emotion. He'd be over-amped for a start, then he'd overcompensate by acting almost sedated in his next, and then get out of control again in the start after that. What we're seeing, guys, is the maturation of a pitcher, one who is finally harnessing his emotions. Bob? And Grenke with his second hit of the night. I'll tell you what, Tom, you've been dead on with Mr. Grenke all night. Mr. National League, Zach Grenke. He is such a student of the game that he was actually breaking down players in the draft, the Brewers, when he was pitching in Milwaukee. Loves the all-around game. And he can swing it. Uh, he got the bat flip afterwards and everything. He's feeling good about himself. Beautiful stroke. I was at a game in San Francisco at AT&T Park in September in which he homered and narrowly missed another one. Hit the top of the fence with a double. So he can swing the bat and he's proven that tonight with a pair of singles. Here's D. Gordon. Hits it toward the middle by the diving long. Greinke is around second. He heads for third. The throw from Jay is cut off. Runners at the corners with one out. Well, you don't get that with a lot of pitchers. What an athlete to go first to third on that. You know Jay is going to be coming that direction as a left-hander ready to make a good throw. Oh, Harold, if I'm Don Mattingly, I'm holding my breath. I love the excitement that Grinky shows running the bases. But I got to hold my breath when he's going to the bag head first. Sticking out those, that right hand and right arm to get the third base. Yeah, that's the part of the play you don't like. You like to see him go first to third, but you don't like this. No, Zach, no. Well, you see he's got the glove and the batting hand and the right hand, and he made sure that right hand stayed away from the base going in. But he's as frisky as a pup. He's all pumped tonight. Actually, there wasn't even a play on him. If he'd known that, he wouldn't have had to go to the extra effort. He does execute some care right here. You see the glove in the hand. Still a dangerous play, but he makes sure he gets the bat with the left hand. Yeah, but I, I don't care. I don't want to see my pitcher throw his arm down there at all. Not at all. All true, but, you know, you have to tip your cap to him. He's not just oh, no a pitcher. Doubt. He's a baseball player. He's a baseball player. I love that, too. No doubt. Lynn has struck Puig out twice. And you see the difference with D. Gordon on first base, the distraction. And I was talking about Hanley Ramirez with no lead. That's the first time we've watched Lance Lynn step off, look over, D. Gordon drawing that attention right now. And it changes how the pitcher attacks the, 
the hitter. His concentration is not as focused on the hitter when you have the distraction at first base. Gordon stole 64 to lead the majors. Molina cut down 45% of those who try to lead the majors in that category. And this is interesting first and third it's a great time to steal but I think in this situation with Grinky at third base and the lead he has they're throwing a sack at the run. Gordon was caught stealing 19 times this year. And successful 64. I'm looking at Granky up there at third base as you see Puig is out in front of this sinker. One of my favorite sights is watching a starting pitcher, any pitcher for that matter, take the mound with dirt on his uniform almost from head to toe. You see it in Little League, not often in the Major League. I don't know if you run in this situation. I think you sit here and you, you let Puig and then Gonzalez swing the bat. See what happens. Gordon not going. And we taps it foul 0 and 2. Better swings though. This time you're seeing Puig make the adjustment a little shorter to the baseball. Doesn't look like he's trying to get too big. I'll tell you what, Mark McGuire is a great hitting coach. I, I don't think people you're going to remember him for home runs. He was a good hitter. He had a real good idea what he was doing. He was around great hitters all the time. And he can work with a speedster like D. Gordon or a power guy like Puig. Lynn looking to punch him out for the third time tonight. High and away, ball one. If you're Lance Lynn here, you got to get a ground ball. Hopefully, he hits it hard at, at somebody and you can turn it over. It's going to be tough to double him up, but you want to get that double play and get out of this. He'll take the strikeout. That too. And then you got Adrian Gonzalez still too. Here's the one two. Two and two. Here's a guy who hasn't even begun to scratch the surface. His upside is astronomical. It really is. And his popularity has shot him skyrocketed him beyond his his growth and maturity as a player. So popular here in LA. Got him for the third time when he needed it. Seventh strikeout overall for Lance Lynn. Like well, you said, it, Harold, he wanted the double play. He pretty much attacked him with the two seamers throughout this at bat. This one is off the plate. He chases, trying to protect with two. Excellent job by Lance Lynn. I, I think the whole night was set up with the first pitch. He got hit yesterday by Wainwright. He gets knocked back the first time at bat tonight. That's opened up the whole outside half for the Cardinal pitching staff against Puig. So now it's Agon. It was hit the ball hard both times. Lined to deep center. And then an RBI single in the third. Here, Bob, you have to mix up the pattern on Adrian Gonzalez. If you continue to throw him outside, we watched him, they missed their spot. He took the ball back up the middle, but he's had some great swings and he's diving now, looking for you to throw that ball on the outside half. You're going to have to get inside, you want to get him out. Well, that was a rare changeup from Lance Lynn. Frankie at third, Gordon at first. Gonzalez punches one at a shallow center and Jay will be there. They got in on him and you got the pop up. Dodgers threaten but don't add to their lead. It's a 2 nothing game after five.
Baseball, stay connected with highlights, replay reviews, scores, live radio broadcasts, and more. Get the AtBat app for your smartphone or tablet. And our aerial coverage is provided by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. Top of the order and the top of the six for the Cardinals who trail 2 0. Carpenter, Jay, and Holiday. Carpenter is grounded out and walked. Hits one softly, but in a good spot. It drops in. It's cut off by Puig. A whirling throw back toward the middle of the diamond, but Carpenter slides in with a leadoff double. Wow. Couple things on this play. One, we watched Carpenter last at bat after the pitcher had hit, have a team at bat. This one's his at bat. He gets the pitch he wants, he drives it. And the wow for me is Yasiel Puig. Did you see him throw this ball off balance? Full speed, sprinting towards the wall and left, and he throws it almost all. I mean, this is ridiculous. You talked about the freakish nature of his athletic ability, Bob. That was incredible. Not much for sure I'd recommend it. It was fun to watch. <laughs> I can't wait for Matt Carpenter's book, How to Hit a Cy Young Winner. Lake Kershaw and Granke. Came into this game hitting 333 lifetime against Granke. We've seen the last two postseasons what he can do against Kershaw. And again, the conversation about changing their signs. And whether they are tipping signs or not, they're 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 well aware of the thought. And that's all you want. And if you're the Cardinals and you have signs and you give them great if you don't no problem but if you're the Dodgers you have to go ahead and make sure you got your signs mixed up and you feel good at the end of the night. Ricky to Jay a one hopper to Ramirez Carpenter back to second and there's the first out. Take some good swings now. We're moving to this inning here, Tom. Two good swings at, at uh, Grinky. Yeah, but at least Grinky was able to get the out by holding the runner at second base. Jay, really not a pull hitter naturally, wasn't able to get around that ball to move the runner over. Holiday, two for four with a homer yesterday. 324 lifetime against Grinky, but he struck out twice tonight. This is the dangerous at bat. This is when he's at his best. He's seen him two or three times now. Able to measure it. You saw AJ Ellis right there setting up very late. That's the other thing to counter a team that's trying to decipher signs or especially location. Set up in and jumped away as Brinky began his delivery to the plate. Now, in fairness to the Cardinals, they made it real clear they don't tip signs. They don't give them from second base. That's what they were told me before the game. It's being fair. Now, also being fair, it was A.J. Ellis who told me before this series began, I need to set up later because it is the Cardinals. So on reputation alone, the Dodgers addressing that. Carpenter opened the inning with a double to left center. Jay grounded out. Holiday at the plate, representing the tying run. He had 20 homers during the season. Two and one. Let's check with Ken Rosenthal. Bob, I asked A.J. Ellis after yesterday's game if there was any discussion during or after the game about the Cardinals picking up signs. He said no, not at all, but he added that it is something that he is aware of, that the Cardinals, he said, are a very competitive team, and they are also competitive even when they are on the bases. It's Carpenter who has the vantage point on Ellis now as he leads away from second. Mm, Holiday nice. slices one foul. Nice swing. Now, there are some, some hitters and a lot of hitters, and I have to throw this in there since we're being fair. Matt Holiday. Is one of these guys that I don't care if you have the signs or not. I don't want them. Now the only reason I'm speaking about this a lot is I used to give them as a player. I had a lot of people that asked for it. This generation does not really ask for guys to give you signs mm -hmm. from second base. I didn't like to have him as a hitter because I didn't trust the guy at second knew what he was doing. 
But when I was at second, I had a number of hitters would say, when you get there, let me know what's going on. But this game has changed. You know, we have a different generation of players and a different mindset that doesn't necessarily play the way they did back in the day, so to speak. And that was a rare meeting on the mound where one of the players did not cover his mouth with the glove. You saw them talking about the pitch sequence here. Generally, you'll talk about pitches in sequence, not just one. Frankie has his sign from Ellis. And it's 2 2 to Holiday. And if I went back and read those lips, Bob, he did say four seam fastball. And that's what he went to. And he's pretty much stayed away from Holiday with the four seamer, where the book is mostly to pound him in and don't let those. Arms, big arms get extended. You guys know where that conversation came from with, as we look at this four seamer? That came from Will Clark hitting a home run off of Greg Maddox in the in the postseason. He read his lips, he knew what he was gonna throw in. First pitch, boom, see you later. And after that, everybody started covering up their faces. Game within the game. Another 2 2 pitch. And he just barely got a piece of it. As a team, the Cardinals plummeted from an otherworldly 330 with runners in scoring position, the best in at least half a century for any team, down to around 250. But that didn't affect Matt Holliday. He was a National League best 361 with runners in scoring position this season. I think Matt Holliday is one of the, a throwback. He's a rare combination of power and ability to hit the ball with the ballpark and, and make contact. And very similar to Adrian Gonzalez, he understands. There's an art form to driving in runs and you talked about what Tom take a little off and just put the ball in play. Yeah. Holiday fans for the third time tonight. So Puig with a strikeout hat trick and Holiday with the same on the other side and we check with Greg Amsinger. Thanks. Well, this postseason keeps getting better by the day and night. You almost have to add the disclaimer. The game's not over yet. <laughs> the way things have gone this week already. I'll tell you what, the Giants are scary though. When you have to fight for your life all the way through, they played that wild card game in Pittsburgh. They knew they're going to be that road warrior type of club. This is a, they win this game. It's a huge win for them. Adams 0 for 2, a ground out and a fly out. Carpenter led off with a double. He remains at second with two down. Well, if San Francisco holds on to this lead, the team with the best record in the National League will be down 0 2 and going on the road. The team with the best record in the American League, the Angels, down 0 2 and heading for Kansas City. Doesn't matter what you do over 162, any team good enough to make the playoff field can beat you in a best of five or a best of seven, especially a best of five. It's added some excitement to baseball, no doubt. You see here on shift tracks, not the extreme shift. Dodgers have to honor the threat of the stolen base with Carpenter at second. And Adams actually has a chance to get a ground ball through the right side. Gordon back on the outfield grass from his second base spot. 3 and 0. Oh. Where does he hit the baseball? You can see he prefers to hit it to the right side. These are all the balls that he put in play. It's about half to the pole side. Well, the one thing I like the Dodgers are doing with two outs, you leave that guy at second base, you want to run, go ahead. Look where D. Gordon and Gonzalez are. They're both all the way back. Now you can give yourself a chance to knock a ground ball down. Adams thought he might have had the walk, but the plate umpire Rob Drake didn't agree. And Granke pitching to the defense has stayed away during this at bat. Yeah, Matt Adams seeing the ball really well. Gave up on it quick. He knew that it wasn't a good pitch. 
He didn't get the call. Adams hit 288 for the year with 15 homers. And he draws the two out walk. Yeah, he decided to try to sneak one by in the inside corner. You saw the reaction from Granke. He upset it himself for sure, missing. Number 27, Johnny Brown. Makes that there. Runners in scoring position. 0 for 6. I think also the one thing Zach Grinke does as good as anybody, he looks to the on deck circle. And I know Johnny Peralta's had a nice year, but I think he would rather have the matchup righty on righty here than giving in to Matt Adams the way he's swinging the bat. Carpenter at second, Adams at first, with two out on the Cardinal sixth. And strike one to Peralta. I would never want to be a catcher. Taking a beating back there. And that's almost a nightly thing. Ouch. That one's off the knee. On the other hand, a high percentage of catchers become managers or broadcasters. So <laughs> there's a post playing career life there. One and one. All their faculties are intact from all the foul balls that you still think, right? If they're managing and broadcasting. Well, in the other dugout, Mike Matheny had to retire prematurely because of multiple concussions. Yes. About which he's expressed concern. He's fine now, went through a period in his life where he was somewhat disoriented and wonders about what might happen as he reaches middle age. Oh, the change up. Tying Peralta in knots. We hadn't seen that for about two or three innings, and he breaks it out on Johnny here. This is a slow little 72 mile an hour curveball. Just whoo, nasty. Changing speeds with a hook. And right now he is a multiple choice question. He can go anywhere to five pitches. Two and two. That is his preferred pitch. I think it's his best pitch. That slider overthrew it a little bit. I like the way he's been taking his time, a little more time in between pitches. He understands how big the sequence is. That slider is very often his put away pitch against right handed hitters. A Dodger fan and a Vin Scully fan cheering Granky on. Gets him swinging his seventh strikeout of the night. The Cardinals leave two and still trail by two.
shut out on two hits through six innings of work. Tomorrow, a pair of game threes in the ALDS, each a potential elimination game. Orioles up 2 0. Go to Detroit for game three against the Tigers. Kansas City, Cinderella story of this October, up 2 0 at home against the Angels. First game at 3 30, O's and Tigers. Angels and Royals at 7 30 Eastern Time. Matt Kemp against Lynn as the Dodgers come up in the sixth. Well, Lynn's doing his job. He's keeping them in the game. And they've made a couple of threats, just haven't been able to pull anything out. Kemp hits it toward the hole, and it's by Peralta for a leadoff single. Look out, people. Matt Kemp is locked in. It's the best I've seen him, Tom, in about two years. I agree. You talked about the change going back to the squared up stance. Really impressed with his balance. Before he was diving into the baseball, and you see that upright stance allows him to keep a much firmer base and better balance. I agree. The last couple of nights, he's been on everything curveballs, change ups, and the sinker right there. Ramirez is one for two, had an infield single in the second. And hit a bullet at Peralta the last at bat. Johnny robbed him of a hit in that at bat. Looks like Lance got his foot caught in the dirt as he was pivoting right there. Seth Manus getting loose in the Cardinal bullpen. Each team is carrying 12 pitchers and two catchers in this series. Hit foul. The Cardinals, in the course of winning the game 10 to 9 yesterday, used eight pitchers. The Dodgers used five. Well, one of the things you're seeing, Mike Matheny taking a close look, they're getting good swings now. I, I, I love watching Matheny and Mattingly because they still try to put themselves in that batter's box. And say, all right, what's it look like to me? That's one of the great gauges that Donnie has on how his pitchers are doing. And I can see that right now. They're starting to take they're really good swings at Lance Lynn. They may not be around much longer. Kemp was once a 40 stolen base guy. This year he swiped eight. Well, he's had some major injuries. You know, the ankle that kept him out of the postseason last year, the shoulder surgery he had to come back from. The final step in his coming all the way back will be can he explode and get back to being that base stealer again. And he skips back. Approaching 90 pitches with nobody out in the Dodgers sixth. A ball and a strike to Ramirez. He's almost two versions of Lance Lynn. Strikeout situations, it's the four seamer as his go to pitch. Ground ball situations when he wants to double play, it's been the sinker. But I'm with you, Harold. They've had better swings on the sinker in the last couple of innings. Got underneath. Well, this is where people get in trouble sometimes. You still look at the radar gun. You know, yeah, he's getting it in there at 94. And this is the, the four seamer Tom's talking about. That means you're going to see four seams coming at you if you're wondering what, what a four seamer is. If you grip a baseball around the horseshoe and you let it release, you're going to see four seams as it rotates. A two seamer, you're going to see two of the seams. One's in there to even the count of two and two. A moment ago, a glimpse of Derek Lilliquist, the Cardinal pitching coach. And if you're looking at the radar gun to tell you when a pitcher is beginning to tire, it's too late. It's command that will go first, and that's what we saw with Clayton Kershaw yesterday, missing with the fastball. 
Thanks for finishing that point. I left that hanging. Good job, <laughs> man. Been hanging around him a little while, Bob. You can only learn that way. Foul back. So you know, speaking of Kershaw, one of the big questions hasn't been answered yet, but we can guess. Would Don Mattingly bring Clayton Kershaw back on three days rest to pitch game four, assuming there is a game four? And it would make sense to do it whether they're up to one or down to one, because then that would set them up, win or lose, depending upon the way the series stood, for a fifth game to be pitched here by Granke. That's the only way to get each of them to pitch two games in a potential five game series is to use Kershaw in game four. Yeah, I'm curious what he'll do because they tried to use Clayton on three days rest last year. It did not work out very well. And what do you do here? Three two count. You got a swing and miss pitcher on the mound in Lance Lynn. You got a catcher and Yachty behind the plate. You I, think run you, I think you hold him with nobody out. I think he's going to run him. That's what's great about baseball. You don't know. We're about to find out. He is going. And he'll have to come back. The only reason I thought they might run him, Tom, is because Hanley's had good swings. Even the ball he fouled back was a pretty good swing. At this point in time, Donnie's got to trust that Hanley's going to know his strike zone and be able to put a ball. If he swings, he's going to hit it. And Lynn looking for the swing and miss went to the four seamer up. Matt Kemp's got to ex execute this as it's a stolen base, not a run and hit or a hit and run. He's got to act like he's still in this bag. He goes again, and it's fouled back. <laughs> Love the reaction from Hanley. Oh, this is October baseball right here. And this pitch is out of the zone, 94. He gets a great rip out of it. He says, I can't believe I missed it, or something like that. Tell you what he said. No translation here. I thought that might be what he said. <laughs> Strong Hispanic flavor to this series. Yeah. We Gonzalez, Molina, Ramirez. There's the walk. Him can trot into second. And, and there's the trust of Mattingly, believing that Hanley's going to be able to handle it. That's a pitch that's. Borderline. That's a tough pitch. If he swings, he's probably going to swing and miss. And if he takes it and it's called a strike, Kemp is going to be thrown out. So that's the guy you got to trust that he knows the strike zone. Liliquist, not Matheny to the mound. Lynn would be scheduled as the fourth hitter in the top of the seventh for the Cardinals. Adam Wainwright said in spring training about Lance Lynn. He's built to pitch 200 innings and he's built for the postseason. The big body, the power fastball. This is his moment now as his pitch count climbs where he needs to execute. Seth Manus in the bullpen is a ground ball throwing machine. Yeah, he's induced more double play grounders than any reliever in baseball over the last couple of years. A little surprised they didn't have a left hander ready to go as this inning was starting to. Come around. And now here's Crawford. They have Randy Cho. Gonzalez took him deep yesterday, but Cho is generally very effective against left handed hitters. And Freeman, and I know he walked two guys yesterday. But Sam Freeman and Marco Gonzalez, who was the winning pitcher yesterday. And I think everybody was available tonight. Maybe Gonzalez was the guy that may be questionable because he got him up a couple times. Matheny told us before the game that everybody he used yesterday, with the obvious exception of Wainwright, could give him at least a batter or two tonight. Saw Yasiel Puig a shot there in the dugout. Got some attention from the trainers. Looked like that left wrist. I can tell you, he keeps the trainers busy. He does. He's built he? like an NFL running back, but I'm telling you, he gets a lot of medical attention.
taking some good swings, Bob. I mean, they're they're covering everything. So I don't think he's going to get through this inning unless he's able to maybe get a double play ball. But it, Kemp hit a bullet. Hanley took about four swings. He fouled back. That ball right there, Crawford's on. So they're they're trying to get through it. They're stretching. This is that tough period right here to see if they can get through this thing with Lance Lynn. Two right-handed hitters behind Crawford, Uribe, and AJ Ellis. The one-two pitch struck him out. His eighth. You just saw that emotion that Ken Rosenthal talked about. He knew how big that was. Pitches with a lot of energy and emotion. And he showed it. Knowing there's a big strikeout right here. The four seamer has been his swing and miss pitch. Again above the hands. After the 2012 season, they asked Lance Lynn to lose weight. He lost 40 pounds. Next season, he ran out of gas in August. Put some weight back on. And right here, he's being tested about how much he has left as pitch number 100 is about to be on its way. He's almost through it. If he can get that, that critical double play ball, that's going to set the Cardinals up for next inning. He has struck Uribe out twice tonight. Campbell singled is now at second. Ramirez who followed with a walk is at first. This is remarkable for watching. I mean, it's just four seamers and two seamers. Early in the game, you heard Mike Matheny talk about some swings and misses on the breaking ball. When in trouble, the go-to pitches have been the fastballs. Tell you what, it's, it's just reach back. It's mono against mono. Here I come. I'm coming after you. And his 101st and 102nd pitches of the night each came in at 95. A lot left in the tank. And sometimes the pitching coach goes out and says, this is it. Let us have your best. Empty the tank. Down the right field line into the corner and a foul ball. Now this is the third time that Lynn has jumped ahead to a two strike count on fastballs against Uribe. First two times he finished him off with the cutter. As we mentioned several innings ago only one starting pitcher in the majors Bartolo Colon was more reliant on fastballs than Lance Lynn. Same way a third time. The rebay wasn't biting. Another situation. Do you run both the runners right here or do you let them hold? Do you trust that your rebay can put the ball in play? I don't think you run them in this situation. Well, he struck out twice, so I don't know how confident Don Mattingly would be about that. The runners are not going. A little squitter to the right side. Adams has it, goes to the bag himself. And now it's second and third with two out. Well, this is going to come down to Grinky because they got it right where they want it. It's going to be Lynn against the pitcher. You know, second and third, AJ Ellis coming up. They're going to put him on, and they're going to go after Grinky. Even though he swung the bat nice, he's got two hits. I got to go after the pitcher myself. Well, if you're Don Mattingly. To give Justin Turner to be a bet. No, no. Only no. at 88 pitches, Zach Greinke, you got to believe he's got more left. Oh, oh, absolutely. Man. Not only has he been masterful, but with the exception of Kenley Jansen, I don't know that Don Mattingly <laughs> is <laughs> has an abundance of confidence in any of his other relievers. And hey, right now it might be his best hitting hitter right now is Zach Greinke. Couldn't have worked out any better for him, and that's another reason you don't run with your rebate just in case you do happen to steal the bag and he strikes him out. You got second and third, you still get this situation. So they were trying to give themselves two opportunities to drive in that runner before Greek got up. And Lance Lynn has been here before, bases loaded this year. 
Hitters are batting 100. Two for 20. For two for 20. Wow. That is a turnaround stat. All right, so Brinke showed bunt, pulled the bat back, dropped a single in the right field his first time off. Then a sharp single between short and third in his second trip. Dodger Stadium crowd. Every seat sold, just about every fan standing. Lance Lynn trying to keep the Cardinals within striking distance. And get out of what is now a bases loaded jam in the sixth. Safety squeeze or just a bluff? If he's bunting for a hit, here. Well, it's got to be bunting for a hit. It's you can't, be. You yeah. can't with two outs. No. What was that about? I'm not sure he's not really thought about it, or maybe he's taking he's all the way. Yeah, he's, he's showing just, that. He's probably taking a pitch. I don't know. It wasn't going to work if you got it down. No. <laughs> Put it that way. What was that about? <laughs> the 1 1. That's a good swing right there. You talk about a, a hitter keeping his head on the baseball. Didn't look like a pitcher. Watch his head stay on this baseball. Well, that's a high school player. Played a lot of shortstop. Very, very good hitter. And he's shown that again tonight. The one two. Off the outside corner, two balls and two strikes. Boy, what a great pitch, though. He's just missed on that pitch a couple of different times. He's tried to use the outside half as that eliminator. Camp is at third. Ramirez at second. Ellis is at first. Frankie at the plate. And Lynn's 114th pitch of the night. Is bounced slowly to the left side. Carpenter flips to Adams and they're out of it. The Dodgers leave the bases loaded in the sixth. And it remains a 2 nothing game. As we go back to our MLB Network studios to check in with Greg Amsinger.
field double by A.J. Ellis. Granky, good hitting pitcher, shows bunt, drops one into right. Gordon bounces one to second. The initial call is double play, but as you see on the replay, and it was reversed, Wong tagged him without the ball. Adrian Gonzalez strokes an RBI single to center. Meanwhile, Greinke has made it stand up. He's allowed the Cardinals only two hits. And he has struck out seven through six innings of work. He'll face Yadier Molina to start the Cardinals seven. Wong and Grichik will follow. Then the pitcher spot. So this is a postseason game that has been affected, at least to this point, by the new instant replay rule. No but doubt. Come, but come to think of it, if Eric Cooper, the second base umpire, had called that play correctly, if he had signaled safe, considering where Granke was, after Wong flipped it over to Adams, they might have gotten the double play by throwing to second to get Granke, because he was less than halfway there. Great point. And that's the challenge with replay in baseball. Unlike football or basketball, where you have a already set parameter, so to speak. Baseball, you got base runners to set, everything else. That's the biggest challenge with replay. Yeah, you've got continuation plays. Yeah, very well put. That's what I was looking for. Continuation plays. <laughs> We're here to help. <laughs> Joe Torrey, instrumental in. Implementing the new replay rules, which they have tinkered with a little bit. Yeah, they, they've done a great job. Fine tune it. Making adjustments. I, they got to feel good about the adjustments they've made. You know, I wasn't a big fan of replay when it first came in. I thought, oh, we're going to open up Pandora's box and we're going to have a mess. But they've really done a great job. I'm sold on it. And I think the adjustments along the way have made it very acceptable. And you absolutely need it in the postseason. Yeah, you just can't have a World Series game or big playoff game decided on an obviously missed call, which millions of people see. Molina with a drive to right. Kemp goes back to the edge of the track to take it. So Yachty's 0 for 3. Well, if you're a baseball fan and you just got through watching, what, 18 innings, Giants, Nationals? And now you're tuning in here. You're catching us in the top of the seventh. We got another great game for you. The playoffs have been phenomenal. And the post game afterwards here on MLB Network, the boys I have at the studio bring you up speed on everything, all the insights, close plays, you name it. They'll bring it to you. What will they do without you in the studio? <laughs> oh, they'll figure it out. Barely, but they're going to figure it out. Colton Wong has the hardest hit ball of the night. Off Granky. Smacked a double down the right field line in the fifth. Rolls this one to short. Ramirez. There's the second out. And that double you talked about, Bob, I can't even call that a mistake because he threw the target. I have a hard time recalling any misses by Zach Granky over the center of the plate. He's just been so sharp with all of his pitches. Obviously, if Randall Gritchick reaches, they hit for Lynn. If he's retired, do you let Lynn go back out? No, and they, they've actually already sent Tavares out on the on deck circle, too. I felt like with Lynn in the last inning, the swings they were getting, he did a masterful job getting through that, being able to maneuver and get out of that with no damage. But I thought he might get removed within the inning. Tip your cap to Lance Lynn. He kept him in the game. He gave him an opportunity to get through that last, navigate it through the trouble. He's given him a chance. You give him two runs, you should get it. You have a chance to win that ball game. The ball and a strike to Gritchick, who's 0 for 2. But the longer you wait for Oscar Tavares to come to the plate, he's the one left handed threat out of there off the bench. Now you're getting the matchup with the lefty that the, the Dodgers would like to go to with J.P. Howe. So that's why you send him up here now. Brinkley's going to be in the game, you know, for at least uh, another run or two. Yeah, absolutely. You see that 98 pitches. Season high is 118. Just about every start he'll be in that 100 to 110 range. Again, I don't see any drop off in stuff. Velocity or location. Two and two to Gritchick. With two out and nobody on. 
You know, it's a blessing and a curse, Bob, with Gritchick hitting a home run his first at bat in the postseason. He also woke up everybody and said, hold it, I got to pitch this guy a little tougher. home is 100th pitch and Richard fouls it off. You know another reason you run Tavares out on the on deck circle is you get the thought of OK we got a hitter behind him maybe you can get Richard something to hit with Lance Lynn over there he got nothing to hit all night. Another 2 2 pitch. Sailing, got a small piece of the ball, and some people are shuddering in the first row. Oh man, the little girl right there, the bat's flying right at him. I'm so glad it hit the rail. The force in which that bat came out of his hand, the glove would have done no good. No good at all. This is scary. That's why I take my kids to the game. You sit behind the screen. Forget that. Yeah, we were shuddering up here. Richick hangs in there. Again on two and two. Another chance for Ramirez. Cards go out one, two, three in the seventh.
slices one, and Gordon leaps to snare it. Oh, look at that. Tagged him with the glove. You got to touch him with the baseball. You can't touch him with the glove. Oh, this is clear cut. There's no question about it. Ripped through the middle of base hit in the RBI machine. Adrian Gonzalez comes through again. D. Gordon starts it in the bottom of the seventh. Marco Gonzalez is the new pitcher in this MLB Network Division Series telecast is presented by Geico. Gonzalez got the win yesterday. As the Cardinals came from behind, once trailing 6-1 to one against Kershaw, win the game 10-9. Trail here 2-0, bottom of the seventh. I want to show you the effect that D. Gordon has on the defense right there. We've watched him fake a bunt or try to bunt twice. Look where the infielders play him. That opens up so many holes for you. They don't have the reaction time on a sharp ground. Or look at where the second baseman Colton Wong. That's to take away the ball. He might pull towards it. Carpenter's in on the left side. It changes everything when you have speed and you can prove that you can handle the bat. Facing 22 year old Marco Gonzalez the 19th pick overall in last year's draft fast track to the majors debuted in the big leagues barely a year after being selected and he gets Gordon looking Ken Rosenthal has an eye on this game but also on the 18 inning affair in D.C. Well, Bob, that game never should have went 18. And they're going to be talking about it for a long, long time in Washington because of a decision made by manager Matt Williams. Jordan Zimmerman was one out away from a three hit shutout when he issued a walk to Joe Panic. He was at 100 pitches. Williams lifted him with Buster Posey coming up, inserted Drew Storen. Posey singled. Pablo Sandoval followed with a double to tie it. And Posey was thrown out of the plate, a call that was confirmed by replay. So that's what sent it into extra innings. But guys, I've got to think Jordan Zimmerman should have still been in that game. And now the Giants will go for the sweep at home Monday on MLB Network. I'll be curious what the boys on MLB tonight will say and break that down, get a chance to look at it because th that's what happens in the postseason, though. You, you get dissected with all the decisions that are made in the course of a game. But you have to manage the postseason differently. No, Drew Storen is your closer. He really emerged in the last two months of the season. Regular season, no problem with that. Postseason, I'm winning or losing with Jordan Zimmerman. 100 pitches. He's my best option right there. And now the ghosts of 2012 and the Cardinal comeback against Drew Storen and the Nationals rears its ugly head. The one two pitch to Pui. Well, he struck out three times against Lynn. And now Gonzalez ties him in knots. Four K's for Yasiel Puig tonight. And they, they've done a great job of mastering his aggressiveness. Here comes the change up. You see that circle change or an OK change, whatever you want to call it. But he's been hard, hard, hard in on him all night. And then boom, you pull the string on him. He's got to be a little frustrated and maybe confused even how well they pitched him. And they did a great job last year in the postseason against him as well. So Gonzalez strikes out the first two he faces. Now Marco Gonzalez faces Adrian Gonzalez. Who's one for three. An RBI single through the middle in the third. One more note about that San Francisco Washington game. In terms of elapsed time longest postseason game in baseball history. Tied for the longest in terms of innings. At 18, with a game in 2005 in the division series between the Astros and the Braves, one on a Chris Burke homer in Houston at the bottom of the 18th. Tim Hudson started that game for the Atlanta Braves. He started this game in D.C. for the Giants. What freakness is that? Wow. I remember the Chris Burke home run. I didn't remember all won, things that went won on. the game and the series. I remember that. Gonzalez looking to make quick work of the Dodgers. But Adrian Gonzalez may have different ideas, but this one doesn't have the distance. And in left field, it's holiday for the catch. The 
Dodgers go in order in the seventh. Two more turns at bat left for the cards. Then came to the mound to take him out. I think what he wanted to do was make sure that Oscar Tavares was announced before he went and got it. And so once the announcement was made, then they went to go get the left-hander in the bullpen. Rather than that, we could see Zach Grinke pitch the first hitter. Yeah, Tavares had been in the on-deck circle in the seventh. But Grichik made the last out. So a bit of gamesmanship here. Mattingly just waiting to see what was going to happen. They announced Tavares. He's officially in the game, and that's it for Greinke. Back to Dodger Stadium in just a minute. J.P. Howell is coming in.
Ross. Miguel Rojas replaces Hanley Ramirez at shortstop for defensive purposes as we go to the eighth. J.P. Howell out of the bullpen. Oscar Taveras to the plate. Taveras hit just 239 with three home runs in 80 games this year. The Cardinal bench is not particularly imposing. So even though they switch to the left-hander, they have no alternative, and they're not going to burn Taveras here. He'd already been announced, so they'll let him take his chances. Yeah, and this is why they tried to rush him up there last half inning. You knew Grinky wasn't coming out of the game. He either got the at bat off the right hand. Two quick strikes. I believe our graphic here is wrong. There we go. 0 and 2. I do believe this kid someday is going to be a really good big league hitter. Right now it's a tough challenge. He's facing the toughest guys in the big leagues breaking in pinch hit and off the bench. And that is a fair ball. Rolling down the line Tavares looking for two but after a wide turn they may get him at first. The throw gets away otherwise he might have been caught. Tavares asked for time. It looked like it would be an extra base hit. Kemp got over there, played the carom smartly. Tavares was just about to sprint for second, thought better of it, and almost got caught going back to first. Nice piece of hit. Right here, he makes his decision. He thinks he's going, and then all of a sudden, he, get, it, he just gets lucky getting back in. It was Howell who came over to cover, and had he played it cleanly, he might have been able to put the tag on Tavares. You, Gonzalez took a swipe at it and might have deflected it before it could have gotten to Howell. They were both there sandwiching Tavares. That's a traffic jam on the corner. That's a big hit for the Cardinal. Carpenter one for two with a walk and a long drive to deep right center field. And this is a tie game. Matt Carpenter continues to punish the Dodgers. It took two hitters after Greinke was removed for the lead to evaporate. Two doubles and two homers in two games for Carpenter at Dodger Stadium. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. The last at bat he hit the first pitch for the for the double. And right here he gets another first pitch fastball and hammers it. The fact that they had the lefties stacked Tavares Carpenter and Jay I think made it easier for Don Manley to switch to Howell. I'll go back after the sixth inning and Granke had thrown only 88 pitches. There's a long discussion in the dugout to check on him. Saw the reaction from Howell almost doubled over knowing the result as soon as contact was made. No doubt. Or no doubt about it. Well the switch to Howell might have been logical but now it's lamentable. Absolutely. 0 2 pitch to Oscar Tavares. The first pitch to Carpenter and here we are. Well we talked about guys really becoming a breakout star particularly Matt Carpenter. He's comfortable at third base. I think he's he's more relaxed this year understands the situation. One of the most patient hitters in the big leagues has burned the Dodgers for extra base hits three times on first pitches two home runs and a double. I'll tell you what we got a new game boys. Two two. This place is going crazy. A five run lead for Kershaw. A two run lead for Granke. 
both disappear. Into the, the difference night. is that Kershaw gave it up. In this case, the bullpen is the culprit. Howell and just two hitters. And there's a terrific play by Rojas. The one bouncer to Gonzalez and Jay beats it. Rojas just into the game for defense. Almost came up with a web gem, but Jay beat it. Tremendous play. If he's able to get to his feet, he couldn't pop up. He slips right as he catches the ball and gets to to the grass to come up and throw. There's a little bit of a slip, and so he wasn't able to put it up on it right here. He's going to slip and fall just a tad bit. Get it right there. Great throw. Great play. John Jay hustling all the way, man. Booze, we would have to say, both for Howell and for Mattingly. Despite the fact that the record says he's done very well as the Dodgers skipper, there has been some criticism of some of Mattingly's in game moves here in Los Angeles, which comes with the job. Howell could not do the job tonight. Aerial coverage provided by Direct TV. You call yourself a sports fan, got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Brandon League out of the bullpen. Matt Holiday to the plate. Struck out three times against Grinke. A called strike. Brandon League was 2 and 3 this year. ERA of 2.57 in, as you see, 63 appearances. An all star. With Seattle in 2011, he was their closer then and saved 37 games. His 0 1 to Holiday is bounced toward third, and it was a foul ball. And, and that's a heck of a play right, right there by Adrian Gonzalez. That ball gets by him. If it's a fair ball, it's going to be down the line, and you're going to continue on because John Jay was going. All the way to third. And Rob Drake, the home plate umpire, has the call on this. He's got the call up to the base. Just goes into foul territory. Single by Tavares. Long home run by Carpenter. Infield hit by Jay. And that man right there. Been special. The cards have tied it. Tied it. They have the go-ahead run at first with nobody out. And Matt Carpenter, the Dodgers don't know what's hit them in Matt Carpenter all year long. Just nine hits 
on first pitches. No home runs. Three extra base hits. Two home runs on first pitches in this series. One and two to Holiday. Brandon Lee got into the game yesterday, his first career postseason appearance. He retired Randall Gritchick with a man on second to end the top of the ninth. He was left off both the NLDS and NLCS rosters by the Dodgers last season. You might see John Jay run in this situation. He's stolen six in the past. He's had as many as 19 in a season. He bluffs the go. And Holiday fouls it off. And he's trying to measure, and one of the things they're doing is they got the stopwatch. They're trying to figure out how long it's taken for that delivery and measure the pop time with it. See the stopwatch right there. And that was the conversation. He walks over and says, Here's what, here's what we have. You get a read, we're going. So he took the first two or three pitches to kind of measure it. Chris Maloney, who had been the AAA manager at Memphis, is the first base coach for the Cards. Longtime third base coach is Jose Okendo. It's an off of lead, has no play at second, takes the out at first. Wow. Uh, that's a tough decision. That ball's hit back at him so hard. He may have had a play at second, but in this situation, you don't panic and force a play. That's how you break an inning wide open with the throw to second base there and say he is safe. And great call, Bob. It's a tough play. It's going to be bang, bang if he gets that throw. And if he misses it, now you've really created problems. Yeah, at first blush, I did think he had had the out, or at least a chance of the out. But you do have to be 100% that the out is in order. They're going to walk Matt Adams and take their chances with Johnny Peralta. The Cardinals down big. To the best pitcher on the planet yesterday somehow come back and win. Down two to one of the very best, Zach Greinke. They come back to tie it. The Cardinals have played in October 11 times in the last 15 years. The last three years, twice to the World Series, and the one time they didn't make it, they lost in game seven of the NLCS to the Giants. Since 2004, the Cardinals have played in and won more postseason games than any franchise and by a wide margin. And talking to that guy right there yesterday, Matt Carpenter, he said the beauty of this series is once again, we're the underdog. All the great things you just said about them, they are really, they really don't get the respect that they deserve. It's been a good franchise and it's been a good ball club. And I like how they've kept the nucleus of this team together and they've grown together as well. Peralta's three for 11 in his career against Brandon Lee. That's with two on and one out. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Now, obviously, not all of these Cardinals were with the team during the entire stretch that we just outlined, but the baton is passed. Yes. You know, there's just a feeling within the organization. Well, and you got the foundation in Yachty, who's been terrific, Wainwright, and they continue to pass that. Well, let's remember, Don Mattingly went with his best defensive team, took Hanley Ramirez out of the game. The number two hitter in the bottom of the inning would have been Hanley Ramirez. Now it's Rojas. And Don Mattingly told us when he does make that move, it's almost as if you're taking two hitters out of the game. You lose Ramirez and you lose protection for Matt Kemp. Well, we've, we've watched in the postseason the moves the managers have to make. And usually the ones that get away with it, they keep to their regular season script. And this is something that Donnie's done most of the year. That means it's going to work right now. Peralta to Rojas. They get one. Do they turn it? They do. There's the defense. Paid off. I don't know if Hanley turns that. Rojas sparkled with a glove in this half inning. Well, it was Carpenter who turned things around for the Cardinals with a two-run homer. 
Well, you get you go in as a defensive replacement. You better catch the ball. He did a nice job. That would be a good idea. <laughs> Otherwise, what are you here for? Series telecast on MLB Network is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And sponsored in part by the U.S. Army. Some are driven by expectations. Some defy them. Find your career at GoArmy.com slash defy. And by Capital One, earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase every day. Get Quicksilver from Capital One. Dodgers come up in the bottom of the eighth in a 2-2 game. And Pat Nijic takes the mound for the Cardinals. <laughs> Other components in the Cardinal bullpen have fallen off. Trevor Rosenthal, still their closer, but not as reliable as a year ago. Kevin Segrist, unhittable. Last year, not on the Division Series roster this time around. But Nietzsche has been a revelation. Came to spring training just hoping to make the team. Turns into an all-star. Amazing story. Went to spring training on a minor league contract. Couldn't find a job over the winter. His agent called and said, I got you a job. He said, with who? He said the Cardinals. Pat thought, oh my goodness, there's no organization in baseball that has more pitching than the Cardinals. How can I make that team? Well, you know, he made the Cardinals team. He made the All Star team. And at the All Star game, his brother works on the grounds crew in Minneapolis, right? In his home state. Here's a drive off the bat of Matt Kemp to deep left and down the line. If it's fair, the Dodgers have the lead, and it's gone. J.P. Howell among those perhaps breathing a sigh of relief. He quickly blew a two-run lead. Kemp quickly puts them back in front. They're, they're so excited there's no bubbles going over there. Where's the bubble machine? 
Yeah. There you go. And now Rojas pushes a butt, and Nietzsche's throw eludes Adams. So here's Rojas into the game for defensive purposes, drops a bunt down and reaches as the Dodgers try to add to their lead. It's a great time to bunt, the element of surprise. After the home run from Kim, he tries to push this bunt. Great play by Nisiak, but because of the pressure, it forces a bad throw. Uh, and the reason I say element of surprise, Tom, I don't think anybody expected him to, to try to bunt in that situation. Yeah, and you could see that Nishak had more time and he did not have the grip on the baseball. It's really like a changeup grip to first base. And Mike McKinney is just trying to settle down in the situation. Scored as an error on the pitcher. And now let's go back to the Kemp swing. Skipping down the first base line. I mean, you can throw Slapping five with Davey Lopes. Carlton Fisk in this one, right, Bob? He's Look talking it fair. Kemp finished the regular season hot. He has stayed hot through the first two games of this division series. Now, I know we talked about Pittsburgh last year and how loud it was with their blackouts. But I'm going to tell you what. This crowd is going crazy in L.A. And Matt Kemp is back. Three hits yesterday. Two hits, including the go-ahead homer tonight. We just saw the happiest man in the ballpark, J.P. Howell. They made the face three lefties, retired none of them. And Matt Kemp says, I got you back. Crawford looking for his first hit of the night. A 67 mile per hour offering is fouled to the seats. Nietzschek was terrific almost all season long. His last two outings of the regular season were a loss and a blown save. And the first man he faces tonight takes him deep. Yeah, he struggled a little bit down the stretch. Now they had to really ride Nietzschek and also Rosenthal to get to where they were at. So those guys were overused down the stretch, and Matheny would be the first one to tell you that. But they're not here without these guys. The 0 2 to Crawford. He struck him out. What a difference less than 24 hours can make. Kemp faced each late in the game in the eighth inning yesterday. And the Cardinal reliever retired him on a ground out. This time he hit it out. And it's playing right to where the Dodgers want it. You know, to go from, uh oh, it's 2 2, pressure's on us. The home run to Matt Kemp here in the bottom of the eighth allows him to get to Kenley Jensen in the ninth and see what happens. As you look at Nichek, it's not often that an All Star changes numbers at midseason. He was number 41. Cardinals get John Lackey in a trade. Lackey wants that number. Gives Nietzschek a signed, authentic Babe Ruth autographed baseball. And Nietzsche says, sure, you can have 41. I'll take the baseball. There you go. You got what you want. There's the Cardinals game three starter against Hung Jin Ryu, the left-hander, on Monday in St. Louis. I, I guess when you're trying to find a job like Tom documented how he got to the Cardinals, you're not superstitious about that number. You can have it, and I'll take the Babe Ruth ball. Plus, when you've made as much money in the game as Lackey has, you can go on eBay and get another one. For Nietzschek, that's a valuable asset. Absolutely. We may see the Dodgers play a little hit and run right here. With Uribe, you know Nisek's going to be around the plate, and Rojas runs a little bit, but not a lot. Adams holding him on, not going anywhere. Big cut and a miss. One and two. Knowing that you have Ellis up next, and somebody's going to hit in the pitcher spot, probably Andre Ethier 
in that situation because you're going to bring in Kenley Jensen in the ninth. That's why I thought they may try to hit and run right there and see what happens. But Ribi had other thoughts. He was going yard. And there's Ethia right there. Two and two. Nichek with that funky delivery. Always at least sidearm, sometimes closer to submarine. When he's right, gives right handed hitters fits. Punch towards second. Wong flips it to Peralta, but they can't turn it. Yep, that's a ball they got to turn. And you get the, that's a routine double play. They have to turn that. There was a little bit too much lob on the on the transfer right here. This ball looks like it got caught in his glove and that little bit. It's just a it floated in the air a little longer than he wanted to. It wasn't a crisp bam to the glove. Watch it get caught on the heel of his glove. Now he gives a little more air than you want. That ball's sharp down by his thigh. He's able to release it and get it there. That's how close it is in the postseason or any time the game of inches we always talk about right. That's the difference. If he gets it to him. A millisecond sooner and closer to waist level, the inning's over. Yep. You see, Peralta had to reach for that ball, so his throwing hand was not near the glove. As you said, there's fractions of seconds, the difference between a double play and a runner on base. A.J. Ellis, suddenly a threat in the first two games. Four hits yesterday. A double in three trips. With a ground out and an intentional walk fixed in tonight. And Bob, you know, we talk about the difference in the benches, and when the Dodgers can reach down and you can get Rojas to play defense for Hanley Ramirez, and you can know you got Andre Ethier on your bench offensively. It just changes the difference of what their money can do. Another chance for Wong, and this should end the inning. But the blast from Kemp. Puts the Dodgers back in front three to two. In the top of the ninth, Molina, Wong, and Gritcher do up for the Cardinals.
form and the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Okay, here's Yadi Molina against Kenley Jansen. 44 saves for Jansen this year. Career strikeout rate of 14 for every nine innings of work. Third best all time behind Araldus Chapman of the Reds and Craig Kimball of the Braves. Molina's 0 for 3. And he's in an 0-2 hole. And that's the nasty cutter you're going to see from him. Very similar to Mariano Rivera. We talk about it a lot. This the ball's going to start over the plate. You see it off the side of the fingers, and it's going to just disappear. It cuts away like a slider, but it's a fastball cutting. Started out professionally as a catcher. Didn't hit enough. They put him on the mound, and that's where he found the natural cutter. He told me he didn't throw that way behind the plate. The other difference is it's almost as if he's shaking hands with the catcher. Seven foot stride lane. And he just quick pitched him right there. Sure did. He's an imposing figure out there at 6'5 and 265. He turned 27 years old this past Tuesday. He's from the emerging baseball hotbed of Curacao and got better as the season moved along. Allowed just five earned runs in his last 35 appearances. His one two to Molina. Talk about that stride. Only a Roldis Chapman of the Reds has a longer stride in all of baseball. So when he's throwing 96 with that natural cut, it's effectively 98 because he shortens the distance. They told me with two strikes, he likes to extend the stride even further. To third base for Uribe. One out of the ninth. If the Cardinals can put a man on, the likely pinch hitter would be Daniel Descalso. The only left-handed hitter remaining on their bench. Yeah, and as we go through this series, that will be the biggest difference. You know, you got Justin Turner, Andre Ethier. You know, the Dodgers, Scott Van Slyke. Scott Van Slyke. They have the power to, to come off the bench. Cardinals used the main bullet already in this game in Oscar Tavares. Who came through with a hit. Yes, he did. As part of the two-run rally that briefly tied the game. No question that the Dodger bench is dramatically superior to the Cardinals in this series. Yeah, and I might have to flip-flop and say I would rather have the Cardinal bullpen than the Dodgers bullpen. At this point in time, although Kenley is a, a weapon to be reckoned with. Wong has a double and three trips. All of them against Greinke. Now he's in an 0-2 hole against Jansen. That pitch is so good, he can throw it pitch after pitch after pitch. He does have a slider. 95% of the time, it's the cutter. Long awaits the 0-2 pitch. That's, that's 98. That's the equalizer. We saw Mariano Rivera later in his career go with that straight forcing fastball away. It sets up that cutter. Gives the hitter another thought to think about. on one and two. Foul back to the screen. It's good looking swing right there by Colton Long. This guy Jansen throws so hard you think that when you see something in the mid 90s and sometimes even approaching 100 has to be the fastball. His cutter can get into that range. Yeah that's that's a scary proposition for any hitter. Two and two. Now he dusted off the slider. Just to prove us wrong. Well, I think because Wong, as you said, Harold, had such a good pass at the cutter of the pitch before. I know Kenley wanted to get it further in, but Wong was right on it. 
Jansen decided, I need to show him something else, even if you go back to the cutter right here. Randall Gritchick waiting on deck. Magic Johnson looking on intently. A tiny piece, and he hangs in. Well, we talked all night about how late A.J. Ellis had been setting up right there. He's sitting right under Colton Wong. He's like, I want to make sure you get this cutter in on his hands. Don't be surprised about the power of Colton Wong now. He's got a little power, too. You mess up, leave one out over the plate. He can tie this game. He hit 12 home runs. If he reaches, he's the Cardinals' leading base stealer with 20. Left field, Crawford watches it drift foul. Colton Wong is making Kenley Jansen pitch more than he usually does. This at bat, we've seen the slider, we've seen two sinkers on the outside of the plate. Hasn't been able to get the ball under his hands or get him out of the way. Matt Carpenter itching for another chance. But they'll need some base runners. Another 2 2 pitch. And Wong continues to battle. He's having a great at bat. This is this. Now they're going to have a little conversation. And sometimes you just need to talk about maybe. It's like when you're playing basketball in the backyard, right? You're shooting. The guy keeps hitting free throws. Pretty soon you roll it back at his feet to break his rhythm up. You know, and sometimes a pitcher and catcher have to do that with a hitter. Colton Wong is locked in. Everything. So you break his rhythm, his timing a little bit. You can see it all over his face when he's in that batter's box. I still think Jansen's way to get him is to get it a little further in. He's feeling good right now if you're Colton Wong. He's seen every pitch he has to offer. He's been on everything. He reaches back and he just says, Here it is, big boy, come get it. Not worried about the cutter, and maybe that was a conversation, but also they broke up that great concentration and rhythm, sometimes taking that hitter out of it. Randall Gritchett was 0 for 3 against Greinke. Hit a homer yesterday off Kershaw. The Cardinals' last chance. Ball one. I mean, the ball just sounds different when it hits the glove when Kenley Jensen's throwing. Richard can keep it going. Daniel Descalso, as expected, has moved into the on deck circle. If two can reach, it'll be Carpenter's turn again. Two and one. An announced crowd of 54,599. L.A. fans notorious for leaving early. Not many have done so tonight. Puig in center field. He can forget about his four strikeouts tonight if they hold on and win it. And even the series heading for St. Louis. Cardinals down to their last strike. Jansen trying to finish them off. And he does. 
One, two, three in the ninth. Two of them strikeouts. And they head for Missouri, tied at one. Hey, what we got a series, boys. And Matt Kemp is a difference maker. Last year, Cardinals and Dodgers played in this very series. That Anley Ramirez gets hit first at bat. He was a non-factor. And Matt Kemp was out with an injury. Now you think about his journey. You mentioned it. Had the bad ankle injury. Did not play in the postseason. Talk about trading him in the offseason. Wasn't healthy enough to start the season with the Dodgers. Struggled in the first half. Moved to left field. At the end of the season, player of the month in September. Look at J.P. Howell. They were fitting him for goat horns. And then the laurel wreath went to Matt Kemp. And a sigh of relief from Howell. And that's the last gasp with Magic Johnson looking on as Gritchick with a half swing. Is finished off by Jansen. That's the difference right there, Matt Kemp. That might have been the biggest home run in Matt Kemp's career. The Dodgers have a chance to go down 0-2. They go to St. Louis down 0-2. This series is about over. Ken Rosenthal is down on the field. Kenny. Matt, you played in some in front of some loud crowds here. Where does this one rank? Uh, this was big, man. Uh, you know, it was loud in here tonight, but uh, you know, we, we continued to grind. You know, we, we got we got it the score was tied and uh, we continued to grind and we came back and won the game. The knee check at bat. He got you yesterday. Tonight you jumped him on the first pitch. What was your mindset going into it? Well, it tastes good anyway. All right, the new second bat. What was your mindset going in? You know, just try to get a pitch up to hit, uh, something to drive. You know, I saw him well yesterday. I, I, I saw he threw me some sliders uh, off the plate, and I was just getting something to drive, and I uh, got a good swing on it. Now, you've been through a lot. The injuries, the trade rumors, change positions. After all that, how satisfying is it for you to perform at this high level on this stage right now? Uh, I just continue to grind, man. This is where I want to be. You know, it was, it, was, it was, you know, last year, you know, it, it, it was tough. You know, I, uh, you know, battled injuries, uh, but, I, but I came back strong. I kept grinding. My teammates were behind me. My family was behind me. We kept grinding, and uh, here we are now. Where does this home run rank in your career? Oh, this is big right here, man. Uh, you know, on this stage in the playoffs, this was a must win for us. We needed this, and, uh, you know, we continue to grind, go to St. Louis, and, and get two more wins. Now, you lost the 6-1 lead yesterday. Yeah. You lost the 2 nothing lead tonight. How important is it for the psyche of this team to come out tonight and win this game instead of dropping it again? Uh, hey, you know, we, we told each other when uh, when JP gave up that home run, we were going to back him up. We were going to find a way to win this game, and that's what good teams do. We back each other up when we make mistakes, and we just keep on going. Matt, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Bye, back to you. Kenny Rosenthal observing the first rule of dugout and sideline reporters with Gatorade and pies flying everywhere when someone does something <laughs> worthwhile. You never wear your best duds for that assignment. <laughs> Do not go with the designer suit. No that doubt. MLB jacket is perfect. <laughs> it's indestructible. It's indestructible. You roll it up in a ball and it's he fine the next night. Oh, man. Tonight's untamable player of the game presented by Bacardi was Matt Kemp. Yeah, I like what he said, a must win. And it became even bigger than that upon blowing that two-run lead they had behind a great outing from Zach Greinke. Well, we talked about it all game, Matt Kemp being back healthy. And the difference maker he has been, the swings he was having. You knew he was going to come up big again. He's having a great series. Uh, gentlemen, we're in for a great treat. Matt Carpenter, he stepped up two nights in a row showing his stardom and now Matt Kemp shows up so uh, as we continue on in this series it's fun watching guys come to the forefront well, it's been fun to watch Matt Kemp who's just been on everything they've tried so many different ways to pitch him mm -hmm. curveballs change-ups tonight was the fastball from the right-hander he's the toughest out in the lineup right now you would not have said that in the first half of the season
No, and doing it against left-handed pitching. Yeah, he's doing it against left-handers. He's doing everything that you can think about anybody comes to the plate. I like the resilience that we saw from both clubs. Yesterday, the Cardinals are down mm -hmm. against Kershaw, the comeback. Tonight, the Dodgers, that's a devastating blow. You feel like you're in good sure seating right now. You're, you tie the game 2-2, and for them to come back, get Matt Kemp and get Jensen in the game, this is the point that they needed. And you're looking at not only falling behind 0-2, but falling behind losing games started by your big two. Yeah, I, I think obviously it was big tonight because of that reason. I still think when we saw Don Mattingly do this, and I'm going to look ahead a little bit, bringing back his two aces. He did that last year with Kershaw when he was up in the series 2-1. to one. i got to believe that's in his mind right now that you give both of those, if you have to, if you need the fifth game, another chance. Win or lose in game three, I think he has to come back with Kershaw on three days rest. Otherwise, if it goes five, he loses either Greinke or Kershaw in the middle. Well, he loses Greinke. Yeah, and, and we're talking a lot about what Donnie will do. But how about Adam Wainwright? You're going to hold him back? He's going to be fighting to get that ball again, too, because his performance was not at the standard he wants. This is a great series. Well, if they split in St. Louis, it's Wainwright back here against Greinke in Game 5. How about listen, that? I mean, listen, we have two teams game. decided by one run, 10-9, to nine, and now a great pitcher's duel, 3-2. to two. We're in store for a whole lot more. Well, Monday... Speaking of a whole lot more, after they went 18 innings today into the night in D.C. with the Giants taking a 2-0 lead, you can join Matt Vaskirjan, John Smoltz, and Sam Ryan for the potential clinching Game 3 for the Giants as they host the Nationals. That'll be Monday afternoon on MLB Network. Coming up next, Greg Amsinger, Mark DeRosa, Daryl Hamilton, and Mike Lowell will break down all of the day's action, and they will have a lot of talking to do on MLB Tonight, presented by Bacardi. So, for Harold Reynolds, Tom Producci, and Ken Rosenthal, Bob Costa saying so long from Dodger Stadium in L.A., and thanks for watching this MLB Network Division Series telecast presented by GEICO.